end for the dragon. That's the big bongo, the big bongo boys one. Like, of course. Uh, right Much later in the game, Big Bongo Boys chased Akali down in the bot lane, meaning that Clarity Black had so much freedom to take that first Baron, and from that Baron, they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory. The higher ranked uh, Clarity Black and uh, honestly still Find performing Akali. extremely well. Oh, and she can't get out simply, tries to ulti over the wall, but that's crucial. Four men were sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen, and it's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does, in fact. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. So easy and the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We 
we're talking about Wombo on one side, we're talking about Wombo on the other side, but the whole time is not correct. We've named on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, the Yomi take the hit and it was And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just gonna respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. Hundred Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good depth running up from base, let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP, they have to pull it out to set a potential steal as a lot. There's a lot less potential to happen. The Valkyrie holds for the engage, they want to make this happen. The Wombo combo! So the bullet time is barely out of range, but it's not gonna matter in the end. The Deathlock has to go on. But this switch is pretty hard in the back line. We have Death Paris all time for his AD carry to put in a 1v4 when you're already routed, they're already on top of you. They make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on poor big and bongo this boys. This series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable, and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made! Come on, get up, come but on, come I gotta say, he was go. smooth once he rolled into it. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first 20 minutes of the game, there was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Malkai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect in there. Then there was a mega turnaround fight for the Big Bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt, but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt, which Big Bongo, Big Bongo boys won in the fight for war. On this side, in a the box is in the midst of unable to get too much out, but trying to keep the force is flat, guys, and she can try right to his Death does not, unfortunately, have the W enough up to heal up. And the car comes back in the circuit, but finds what? Can she find you? No, she gets shut down, and the exchange of lives is so insane. Can Maokai find the damage to treat back? And he does, but unfortunately, it is the ace on the side of Shield that allows them to get this right. Much later in the game, Big Bunga Boys chased Akali down in the ball lane meaning that Clarity Black had so much freedom to take that first Baron, and from that Baron, they spiraled away from the team fight and took the victory. The higher ranks of Clarity Black, and uh, honestly, performing Akali. extremely well. Kaj taking out simply tries to ulti over the wall, but that's crucial. Four men are sent down. This is the freeze Baron I've seen. It's incredibly hard to siege any as We're talking about that, the Dragon does it. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. Everybody oh, can I do it now? Oh, hi everybody! Welcome to Risen Draft Week 6. We're here today with DBZ Freak and Hyper. How are you guys? We is we as hyped as ever, Haru. Do you know why? Ask me why. Please ask me why. Ask him why first and then uh, ask me why. <laughs> should I go with asking DBZ first? No. <laughs> asking you? No, okay. Why why are we hyped, Hyper? Tell me. Tell oh, me all about it. Because my name is Hyper, and I have to be hyped. I'm just kidding, that's not the reason. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was kind of a thought I was thinking, so um, kind of no, read dude, our minds. We, it's week six here in Risen Draft, and I am pumped. I am stoked. I am mm -hmm. ready. We're going to have games. It's going to be a banger. Ooh, I can't wait. Oh, Why you? Why oh, you I'm super boy? excited. I'm super excited. So the two teams, sorry, DBC Freak, why are you hyped? I didn't even get to ask you. Well, I'm going to switch mics real quick. <laughs> because I want everyone to hear the crisp clearness of my voice for why. Uh, <laughs> uh, why? I'm North listening. America griefed EU out of worlds, and I love that. So that means NA over EU, baby, all day. Let's go. Wait, wait, right. what? 
What? Repeat that news? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. NA performed better than EU did in week two. So far of Worlds. EU is 06 right now, and NA is 24. Therefore, we're better. I we're gonna ignore the fact, <laughs> we're gonna completely ignore the fact that Cloud9 got last in their group. We're gonna ignore that. We're not gonna talk about that. That works. I don't think that's how that You're works. You're not even wearing your jersey today, but you know, that's actually quite exciting. Oh, and um, not only that, but we have a wild potential scenario happening in this in this division of the draft league, and I absolutely love it. We have a potential for maybe like three like two different tiebreakers to happen, I think. There, if, as, uh, the, the, let me get the notes. Ooh, wrote it down. So pretty much what could potentially happen is if EOD wins and get this upset and Coach Kev and Coach Kev sucks, there will be a four-way tie to see who gets first seed. That is amazing. And I want that so bad. That also means more casting for me and Hyper, and you y'all know how we are about that. Oh yeah. The games are gonna go longer, it's gonna be more fun. And yeah, like when it's like a tiebreaker, the teams bring it on. Anyways, we're gonna probably take it to a draft now. So we'll see you we'll see you at the analyst desk. Thanks, guys. Okay. All right, straight into draft. No hesitation. Uh, on the side of the staff sucks SS, uh, some action and Aatrox bands. I do respect the Aatrox band coming out. Um, mm -hmm. Super, super busted. Um, always love a Silas band, especially if you're going to have some big wombos coming out. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where the action band is coming from because I don't think I saw anyone really I even play that. Don't, I did not see it anywhere at all either. Uh, I mean, either way, so we're going to get the Maokai first pick, you know, flex that really the triple flex pick that can pretty much go anywhere he wants right now. And he's just like the best jungler in the game. Not I the mean, best jungler, the best champion in the game right now. He's just that good. However, yeah. I will say that um, yeah. when he's been picked in top lane, he has not looked as good. So keep that in nah, mind. He's, he's, I mean, I love how they buffed him and... Oh. Oh no, not the cat. Please, not, not the, the cat. cat. Not the Give cat. Uh, cat. Uh, uh. That cat going straight on a coleslaw uh, there in the bot lane for EOD. I love it. Oh, I man, can. get a griefing uh, top cat. Okay, so anyone in chat that is watching has known that Yumi has been an absolute terror during Worlds this year. Like, every time she's been picked, she's pretty much won the game. Her healing, her the, the sustain she can provide during those late-game teamfights are absolutely ridiculous. The damage she can put out is even stupider, and you just draft a horse here, like, you're pretty much securing And you a just give... Oh, my goodness. You're just, you're just <laughs> drafting a really disgusting, like, teamfight already, just purely off of those two champions well, alone. I mean, it's just a disgusting engage, really. It's not really just a disgusting team fight. That's just a disgusting engage. You get That's you get fair. the speedy boots on the Hecarim, who's already going super fast because of his kit, and then you get Hecarim Fear plus the Yumi ultimate. It's just a disgusting engage. EOD um, is throwing it down, and it looks like that SS is going to respond by taking the Sivir away, which I, I actually I, would I do like. I do like. Um, take away the take away the Sivir, because, you know, the Sivir Yumi pairing is pretty nasty. And I got one shot does like to play his utility carries, and Sivir definitely up there as far as a really good utility carry. Um, oh, yeah, and, oh, yeah. and, you, and you just combo that with uh, Yumi, and it's just, it's just too good. Okay. So staff sucks here, looking for the final pick of the. Players. Yeah, I'm kind of curious on what they're uh, what they're gonna go for here. If they're going to opt Let's crank. to, oh my goodness! So this is okay. equally a flex pick, though. You're right. It could. I've. I think it was. I think it was you actually who mentioned the cuckoo in the jungle. It was definitely me. And you want to know the best part? Have you seen the leaks for patch 12.20? I have not. No. Dude, Blitzcrank is getting a buff to where his E does fucking more magic damage to monster camps. I am going to... Uh... They're actually going to make Blitz jungle. Oh, Kaisa! Kaisa, okay. okay. That's a really and good response. I do believe you were correct. I think uh, EOD was the one that got a pentakill, and I think it was think one it was, shot. Man. And I think it was one shot with the Kaisa, too. Yeah, uh, I think and, it uh, was. We, we made a joke about him even getting one shot a couple of times, and I think it was EOD versus I can't remember who who ended up getting that pentakill, that wild three game series we had a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so uh, give me a awesome. second. I think it was, yeah, EOD versus CKS. Oh, oh isn't that, that's actually pretty kind of funny. Or so, was it? Was it? I, I, th I think it was that series. 
It was it was a couple of weeks ago. That that was yeah. That Coach Kev was, sucks. That's right. <laughs> that series was art, and like I would love Dude, to have. A I remember like that, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. So we got mid lane bands coming in as expected. I mean, you got your bot lane, you got your jungler. So it's like we're focused on the solo lanes here. You already got the Aatrox taken away in the orange. So at, at this point, the priority is coming down on the top laners. You still have Kennen, but I don't think either of these top laners. Play I really. Kennen. I. I mean, I kind of don't like watching Kennen played mm -hmm. in any elo lower than like a grandmaster. <laughs> because, because honestly, Kennen to fit in a team comp, not mm -hmm. only do you, the chant like the pilot, know how to pilot him, but like at the same time, you the pilot have to know how to like enter fights as Kennen because yeah. too many times in like my elo and even platinum, uh, platinum and diamonds, like you see Kennen go on a flank and he like goes in too quickly or not quickly enough, pops the ultimate too fast. And, you know, I really don't see really good Kennen players, like, turning fights the way Kennen's supposed to, or just, yeah. like, like bodying a team fight until you get to, like, Grandmaster Challenger level Kennen. Oh, yeah. So, I don't so, like seeing Kennen in, in competitive play. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't expect we'll, we'll, really, we'll really see that, but it was just, I was throwing it out there. So, two more bands coming in. We got the I Lilia do, I and do. the Poppy. I really like the Poppy band. Yeah, and, and and if the answer immediately is okay, we're just gonna pick Camille because of that. You know I'm what? Okay with I that. love, I love the Camille. I love it. <laughs> I'm so okay with it. Now let's get another like let's just pick another top laner that makes this into a skill matchup. And I would love, I will honestly focus on top lane if this becomes a skill matchup because I and love the skill fact matchups. That, and the fact that they banned the Aatrox already, like mm -hmm. they only have a couple of options that they could pick right now. So I'm thinking maybe they opt for maybe a Jax here Jax, or. Yeah. Or maybe Dare a I say Renekton? Oh, a Renekton. Okay, so that looks like. Okay, that's gonna be sex. So that's gonna. That's go probably going to be a Maokai top. It's definitely Maokai top, and Galio maybe to follow up in the Yo, lane. Oh, SS kind of got some dive going on. Yeah, the only thing is, is they don't have any damage if they do block this in. I mean, Galio does do a decent amount of damage, but like overall, as the game gets later and later, they're gonna they're gonna run out of damage. I mean, you, I mean, they're not gonna run out of tank stats though. No, but like you and have two damage. Shiver's not gonna run out of attack speed, and she's is, not gonna run fair. out of a crit on her boomerangs. That's for damn sure. <laughs> but like. You gotta look at it this way. Obviously, they don't have, is they, gonna build they, some damage. I do. Kaisa is gonna have hers with her plasma, and then yeah. Camille has true damage. And if they lock in the Azir, that's even more raw damage. Like I, like I, like okay, I'm gonna back up a little bit. So yeah. let's say they lock in the Azir, which is already likely with two seconds coming down. They're gonna have to like try to snowball this game as fast as they can to keep those tanks down. It's, and and I'm, as I'm as I'm looking at this draft, it's the same thing Cloud Nine did against their first game against Fnatic. They drafted Fat. for early. Fnatic didn't let them play early, and they just outscaled in terms of tank stats. So, in in terms of um, um, in terms of like the way that these two teams have drafted their comps is Eodia says we're gonna want to fight you a lot. SS says, no, we're going to stand back, get some tank stats, and we have the hardest dive that I have seen pretty much all season in and the draft CC. league. Like, it's so much CC. And, like, and they have a lot of pick everyone, potential. Everyone but Sivir on the side of SS has mm -hmm. a form of CC, and I love it. Yeah, it's Multiple really forms. Gross. Multiple forms of CC at that. It's absolutely gross. I so, like it. We get a pretty good idea of what's going to happen here in game one. I mean, I, 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 it will come down to, um, it will definitely it's gonna come, come down, down to, to the 80 carries, really. Um, Haru, we're going to throw it over to you, let you, uh, get your thoughts on this one real quick, um, before we get right into, uh, the game. But, uh, what do you think of the, the draft going on right now? It's really exciting. Um, what what I kind of got out of uh, what you guys have been speak, like talking about so far is the whole blitz crank being buffed. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that later in the jungle. Well, I guess he's not jungling; he's supporting, right? Also, I um I don't know if it's. I mean, he still could. He I, still. I mean, he still could jungle. You know, though. That's it could thing. be. You know what? I'm gonna be totally honest. I played with the Zach support like a couple times, and it wasn't oh, too bad because he has this ability to roam if you're an 80 carry like Jin, for example i'm not saying Jin's main Best champion in the game. but you can you can play alone in lane because he has such a good kit for that and zach just roams and helps a jungler and it's like a powerhouse so but um in this case i'm assuming it's blitzcrank jungle um supporting 
Um, and then who was the other support? Sorry, I, uh, I didn't forget Yumi. that. There, I got you. Yumi. Oh, yeah. Yumi. Also, <laughs> it's, it's, speaking of Yumi, I love Yumi. Um, just in general, and I do have a cute little Yumi myself. I don't know if you see her. See her. But, okay, so it will be Blitz yeah. support. Oh, it is. Yeah, Blitz support. Yeah. But yeah, Yumi. The, the Yumi. Yumi has to play really safe versus mm -hmm. like Blitz like support. And it's just like Yumi has a good spike, but very, very like easily like volatile in lane. Very, very pa has to play very passive. The AD carry has to take a lot of the charge and like kind of. You know, and then with the Blitz being able to pull pull the bot lane in any time, and then you have the Yumi on top of the AD carry, it could kind of be a bit of a hectic for the bot lane. <laughs> so, yeah. But I am excited for this game. It does look like two two good teams. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts, guys? It looks yeah, like I your faces kinda, are like... I uh, kind of wonder, um, the, like, the build path for the Yumi especially, because the, obviously she can't go to the supportive build, but way more recently I've seen Yumi's rush to Ludin's Tempest instead of going for that Moonstone for that more raw damage output oh, for the poke. And the I, mean, really, I, mean, I mean, for the side of oh EOD, they God. really don't need any more damage. No, they don't need any more, but, but you like, know what? it could happen. The the damage on okay i played versus a yumi recently and she killed me alone just with her q damage it just didn't make sense to me so if she, if people are rushing ludens on her now that damage is pretty pretty that's obnoxious gonna be that is and obnoxious you, and you know what sometimes when you get slapped by that yumi you gotta think man i'm so angry at that yumi I should drink some <laughs> delicious G Fuel, not sponsored by the way. All right, um, totally unrelated note. How do you say the mid laner's name for SS? Um, I was gonna say me, Y Stario. Let me look at Yastariel, it something like that. I was looking at it earlier and I'm like, I'm gonna go with Yastario how, how, or just say Stario. How, I'm trying to find it, but how is it spelled? Y S T A R I A L. Y S T. So that's like yes, yes, yeah. and then what's the the, and it, the other? Yes, Ariel, A R I A L. A R I A L. Yes, Ariel seems legit. Yes, star, Yes, star. Yeah, maybe we'll, call him yes. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out later. <laughs> but I think anyways, if, if I if I just mess it up, I'm just gonna call them World Star for the rest of the game and like. Oh, bad. Thank you. Back. You could do, you could do like um like a nick nickname like vowels, just do the the first the middle and last vowel, and you yeah. call them that. <laughs> I like World Star better though. I like World, World Star. Star. Then he's especially because like with, especially with yeah like with Galio have like, to, like um, release the name. I mean if you think about it, Galio's ultimate you know the the hero of Genshin, so it could be like World Star as he's coming in. So I mean like you know. World Star. <laughs> I like it. I love it. All right, so we are slowly losing our minds over here, and uh, obviously, Friday. naturally, we're waiting for that spectator delay. And that's okay. I, I love how you guys said that you guys went to work, and I didn't want to say it beforehand, but I'm going to say it now. Um, <laughs> I took the day off. I took today off too. <laughs> <laughs> I got oh, PTO wow. for today. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I just, I just uh, yesterday when I went to work, I got home and I was like, yeah, I don't want to fucking go to work tomorrow. And so I uh, <laughs> called my team leader and I was like, hey. I'm not coming if, in. Are you good if I don't come to work tomorrow? They're like, yeah, yeah, take the day off. I'm like, sweet. And then I called my supervisor and I was like, hey, can I take the day off tomorrow? Or like, just make sure your team's good. I was like, all right, cool. I'll send you a text when they, <laughs> I'll send you a text oh. later. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I was going to go to the Ren Fair today, but then I found out it's only Saturday, Sunday. So we're going tomorrow instead. And I was just like, could oh, you, I just want to take today off just to take today off. And I didn't do anything. not do Ren Fair this year because of New Child. What? Um, okay, I'm so sorry, but what are you both talking about right now? Renaissance Fair! Oh, oh, to... sorry. No, I've actually never been to one. Oh, yeah, oh, I say Ren Fair for short. Dude, they're please, lit. Please, please like, explain to me like what happens at a Renaissance fair. Who said like Resident Sleeper there. in the chat? Matt, I'll fight you. <laughs> um, speaking of chat, uh, <laughs> go on over, predict who you think is gonna win game one. Oh um, yeah, actually, both um, both you. Now that we're speaking about it, what do you predict? What is like what? 
what things you want to see out of these teams? Like, what things would you say to the teams if you could? EOD has to snowball super early, otherwise they won't lose late game. Um, <laughs> scaling says otherwise, my good sir. I um, just EOD has early game. EOD has scaling. Yeah, on like multiple different champions. EOD it's, has a Zier. EOD it's just has the same draft. EOD has the better comp. I, I <laughs> Everybody don't. got something to do differently on the side of SS. Everybody gets the same job. Get tanky, CC, and hope to God nobody kills the Sipper. I mean, like, sometimes with scaling, like, if the team can't even make it to the late game and they're just, like, done at mid game, scaling comps would not be the greatest idea. But if the scaling comps pop is like yeah we're gonna we're gonna stretch this out longer than you expect then that's like it's it's gold for them oh yeah anyways we're gonna cut it to break and when we come back we're gonna watch the fun exciting game stay tuned guys welcome back to the risen recap today we're looking towards a risen unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang up. quicksand asleep it's, it's the first game of unstoppable risen pre-made come on get up come but on, come i gotta on. say he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it and our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first 20 yeah, minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's trading back. And Malkai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. Rare Boxer Squirrel just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys. because they're all, Actually, they're not all same song. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the Big Bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt, but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt, which Big Bongo, Big Bongo boys won the fight towards. On this side, and there's a 3GP on the other side, but I can't cut to it, and I can't cut to it. But Box of Crow in the midst of all, unable to get too much out, but finds the Q before he's last dies and chicken fried rice to his teeth with good death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal up and they call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage tree will back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial. Four men were sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. It's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the game, and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just gonna respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the Big Bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good death running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage. They want to make this happen. The Wombo combo. But the bullet time is just barely out of range. But it's not going to matter in the end. The death ball comes too strong. But this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good death trying to stall time for his... Hello in everyone. Welcome to game one. Uh, between Staff Sucks and EOD or Explorers of Darkness. Looks like we got a five-man cheese happening in the top lane, which is kind of nice. They're probably going to try to catch up the Camille when she pokes into the river, but this oh, shit I mean, oh yeah, for sure. Sojo looking like a sitting duck on that Camille. I really hope he's in, 
he did not take a, an ability yet, so if they do come in, he still can uh, hook shot out of there. Yeah, that's so kind of cheesy. And they get the ward down, and they're definitely gonna see everyone and be like, "Oh, okay, yeah. yep, that's cool." All right, good, 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 good. Okay, good. Uh, but he's just gonna back right there on that wall. Oh, he almost stopped the back. That was close. Oh God, that was close. Uh, conveniently enough, so last Tuesday I was streaming on Victorious. Uh, Victorious. Victorious. Either one. Either one. Um, the other. Victor, uh, Victorious. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know how to say their goddamn name. I I mentioned it beforehand. I'll say it again. Sometimes y'all just pick the goofiest names in the world. Uh, but uh, it was uh, three games, all three games, best of one, different teams, and all three, all six teams, all three games, there was a five-man invade on the blue side from red team. <laughs> nice. Not in this case what? coming in for EOD, which kind of lame. Hecarim's going to hit that too after getting that leash, and the bot lanes are going to go to their respective places. Actually, Zach did not even start on the bot side, so that's interesting. That's because he wants to get to the bot side. He wants to he wants to path bot so that he can, you know, get that uh, Sivir accelerated. But I mean, what I feel like uh, junglers got to understand is like sometimes, yeah, it's like, yeah, you got to go down there because that's the lane you want to get ahead. But in reality, is Kaisa Yumi going to be pushing in a Sivir Blitzcrank? Uh, yes, kind of. Well, I mean, yes, level one after that, probably no, depending on whatever Sivir level is up here. I mean, I really don't think that Sivir, I mean, Sivir Blitzcrank don't shove in Kaisa. You know, until Kaisa gets maybe level five and a noon quiver, or just a noon quiver in general, uh, so that she can, you know, use her uh, Q to like uh, CS better. Because I mean, in those early games, maybe I'm just playing it wrong. Then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, Yumi can poke the hell out of them, but that's about it. I mean, I don't see them shoving them in under tower. No, so not that, right. That can get. No, not anymore. Oh, uh, especially with me. the boomerang bounce. I mean, yeah. this is pretty much free clearing for Sivir. That's why I said yes up till she hits whatever next ability. Is. But the lane's pretty neutral at the moment. Even though she's pulling ahead a couple CS, it's going to finish this next one. Way. Okay. A little bit of trading happening, and it's a really quiet start to the game. Zach's down here, so I expect to let them start pushing here in a second. And... Oh, she's going to at least try it. Oh, he went and uh, rooted Close. up that minion, unfortunately. But here comes Sinjo in with that hook shot. Gets a nice shield with the passive. Gets Woo. a nice conqueror proc going on, and Fangu is taken down to half health. Well done, Camille. I love that champion. Camille is so much fun to watch, especially in like pro play. Zack is gonna be here on the bot side, get this first scuttle. The other scuttle on the top side was taken by Hecarim, so yeah, nothing really gonna... Little, he's getting a little information down there, yeah. popping that blasting cone, that vision Pretty plan, much. if you would. Yeah. Scryer's Bloom? Yeah, that's what it's called. Scryer's um, Bloom, there it is. I knew it had a name, I couldn't remember <laughs> what the name was. So how do you think this early game should go? Because well, it's just in, in general, all, all, all lanes, all lanes up. Across well, in all how lanes, should, how should the early game go? Gotcha. Galio is probably gonna just, you know, like Camille's gonna let me not even say what I want to. Oh, I know, but she got some, that was a really good trade um, by Fangu to try to get some damage um, back onto her. Running out of mana though, so that lane's gonna be a little harder. But anyways, as you were going to say, the objective for each lane. So we're gonna start in the top lane. Now, okay, it's just oh, we got fight. Oh man, fighting's all over the place. Get a nice five pack prop. <laughs> And forced to flash out of there from the Sivir just so she can avoid that Void Seeker shot coming out from the Kaisa. Well done for the side of uh, EOD. Uh oh. Oh, mid lane decided they wanted to duke it out too. Oh my goodness. Right when you're about to start talking, uh, they just want to duke it out. Just fight. I'm actually surprised Sivir didn't back here and steed. But I mean, it's not like you're going to have too much fight with Yumi not having those uh, combat summoners anymore. Uh, like you're okay for the moment and like the fact that Azir is losing out on these trades is kind of not surprising Galio does deceptively a lot of damage. I've got to admit like, you yeah, think and, it's and not you, that much. And when you had a face check, you know oh, no, he's dead. Tornado, but here comes a flash coming right out of the Azir Right out of the Galio onto the Azir. Hecarim picks up the first blood though I like what Galio tried to do there. Try to get one as he was going yeah, out um, Tried to make it a one for one there, especially because he heard the ghost. He saw the heck and he's like, ah, crap, I just got to go for the kill here. And But unlucky enough, he couldn't get the final auto off to be able to kill. Sometimes you just got to send it. You know, Senju's doing a really good job of keeping this Maokai under turret. 
Um, he's not been able to back yet, and that's unfortunate. No, but he's going to back down and burn that TP. But as I was just getting ready to say, Maokai, survive. That's all he needs to do is just survive. As he has going to TP back to the lane too. But just survive. That's all he has to do. Get some of those tank stats going. He's got a little bit with the Ruby Crystal and the Cloth Armor, but not terribly too much. And then this is going to go on and just like just try to get tanky as the game goes on. Camille, as we know, is going to do absurd amounts of damage. Whether she's building Sunder or Triforce, we'll find out over the next I, like four or five minutes. I really, I really think this is a Sunderer game. I even so if Galio, even if Galio is probably going to be opting for that Stride Breaker um, build, um, or even the Hextech uh, Belt build, I. He's still gonna be tanky as hell, you know what I mean? Vicarim's just chilling here. Yeah, so is Mac. He's channeling that jump. Here he comes. Guy oh, got he more missed! Barely able to dodge that with the speed up from the Yumi. Well done avoiding that gank. Literally sad this Blitzcrank was not here to help out. <laughs> and that he hooked a minion. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the penalty that comes with picking Blitzcrank, especially because now Maokai's gonna Tinker, die. But Maokai jumps right onto Timeless Tinker. Timeless Tinker is jumping onto him. The fear is proc. The sun is going down. And Fangu forced to flash there just to survive that. Tanky enough to survive the gank, but is he tanky enough to survive the next one without a flash? So, I don't know if you caught it, but there was a really micro interaction. Oh, no, oh, Galio. Scripting of the soldiers right there from Azir. Nice divide, uh, nice Emperor's Divide getting back into the river, but Fangu is here on the rotation. Distro just has to survive just for a little bit longer. Nature's Grasp is coming out, roots up both the jungler and the top laner. And Galio, glass plant into the Baron Pit and survives that. Really well done. So I was just getting ready to say there was an interaction that Maokai did right as he went for the root that canceled Camille's ultimate and made it go on cooldown, which is why they were not able to lock him down. Ooh, what a oh, hook from the Blitz Crank coming in for the beach? Sun. Barely on the edge of that, but a nice trade coming back from Margarine right there. How dare you, sir, try to taunt me. Uses the spears of his soldiers to poke him for it. And in the meantime, Zach's gonna go ahead and get that counter jungle. Kaisa is getting some deep vision in the red quadrant of the jungle, as expected. And there goes Camille again. Camille oh, with a huge damage. Oh my god, Sheen is just so good. Like, such a good first item for Camille. Oh. I miss old Sheen. Not only giving you extra damage, but mana too. That was the nicest part Ooh, about it. That's kind of nice. I miss old Spizzer, uh, Sivir Spelled Shield. I liked regening mana. Instead of health, yeah. Yeah, because I would just bait the CC out so good. Ooh, nice stun from the Camille. It's just like on repeat. Every time this hookshot comes off of cooldown, it, she just goes in for it. Yeah, man, just so much damage coming in. Um, up the cooldown. Ah, oh, she's gonna face it. No, yeah, I, was gonna, okay. I was actually gonna see if she did it. That's why. So that was taking the first. Oh, that's a lie. They did the first dragon. The next dragon coming up is a cloud drake in three about three less than three and a half minutes. At this point, I mean, it's just kind of playing Farmville. The junglers are gonna keep farming up their their way their camps as soon as they can. Clear out vision wherever they're seeing it, and I don't see either team really. We're going for the Rift Herald right now. The bot lane of EOD is kind of pushed back, so they really can't go over. But I mean, but if you sucks, think, bot laner could. If you think about it, every lane minus Camille kind of just wants to sit back and farm. Yeah. Like every like Hecarim kind of wants to sit back and farm. If he doesn't have to, he won't. Zack, same way. Azir would like to sit back and farm. Uh, Kaisa definitely wants to sit back and farm, but they're gonna go here. Here comes the flash coming right out of the saver, trying to avoid that Yumi ultimate. But here comes literally sad, literally sad is going to get that knock up onto him. Get that hook, get that stun. Yumi pops up. Coleslaw's trying to peel for a little bit. Nice shielding coming out from him, but here comes the lethal temple from that saver. And they managed too. to get out of there. The only thing burned was the ghost. Woo wee yeah, two fights on front, and we're, not, we're not stopping, we're still going. Is not over, double talk coming out from the Galio. Margin's health bar is very low, but oh. the Emperor's of High knocks back both members Galio? of SS. Oh, the Timeless Tinker takes out the Galio, and two members are on top of him. He's rooted up, he's getting all of the damage, all of the CC on top of him, but Azir oh. can't do anything but fuck him with his soldiers. He's shifting Zans right into, on top of him, trying to get that Herald to do a little bit more extra damage, but in the end, SS take one for nothing. Okay, I actually thought that was gonna go very much in EOD's favor, but the, the, the tankiness is coming through a little bit. Like, I, I was like, you know, Maokai and Zach do negative damage, but I was wrong, and I forget this is League of Legends and tanks do a million damage for absolutely no reason. 
We finally get some resets happening in the bot lane again. It's season 12, the season of the tank. Don't you know that? Yeah, goodness. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good buys look like that the bot both of the bot laners can get with going back without 1600 gold. So the new cover finally for the Kaisa. What is Sivir gonna back and buy here? We'll find out. Azir's gonna reset as well. Or the recall will be Galio's not gonna let him able to. Oh man, god, dude, the damage coming off of the winds of war is just so much. He's also building full damage, so it looks yeah, like he's going to be going there's to no lose way. Here. I think he might pick up one tank item, and that's probably going to be Demonic Embrace. Demonic Embrace. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that Fengu had a red buff from the Hecarim. That's going to oh, be nice. a, little bit of, uh, a little bit of a predicament. And him getting that kill is actually huge. It does. It pretty much evens out like the gold and the that was happening. He's gonna do a nice root right on top of Camille. Camille is gonna trade back, but literally sad is right here. Camille is literally sad that she's taking all of this CC. The Gets flash. the flash just in the nick of time, and her health bar is very low. What a great roam from the SS support. There's no way he does this right. But... Oh my gosh. I got one shot of just taking these trades super heavy, underestimating that. SS has team members other than Sivir that can go to the bot lane. Yeah, um, we've got some pinks coming up in the Rift Herald, so it looks like after they little that tower in the top lane, they're going to transition towards that Herald. And or they might just transition right over here into the mid lane. Here comes Blitzcrank with the yes, yeah. humongous roams. Gonna try. Oh, the minions were following him and protecting him, but he's gonna whiff that hook. But here comes the taunt oh coming out goodness. with the Emperor. Emperor's Divide is gonna be too huge. The fears are gonna be stopping the heroic entrance, and they're able to take out the Blitzcrank for the illegal maneuver of trying to gank in his ear. They're trying to catch the Sivir, or not the Sivir, the Galio. They don't oh, see yeah. him. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, they see able him. able to come out right there in the jungle, channeling that taunt. Gets that taunt. Gonna get the Winds of War, but here comes Kaisa turning around. Gets knocked up right onto the Hecarim, and his health bar is just too low. And Kaisa picks one up. All right, Galio's about a thousand gold down now at this point. You're gonna get a little worried, especially. Oh, and his tech ultimatum. This Camille is looking for blood. The nice root coming out from Fangu, but his health bar has just gotten taken down to half. He's gonna get slowed up. He's gonna knock her back with the channeling coming out from the Zach over the top of the wall. Ooh, barely misses, but the Camille Ooh. is still looking for a little bit more. Gets a nice, nice shield off of that passive. And down into the bot lane, we have literally Sad literally running for his life. Here comes the Yumi on top of the Hecarim. The Hecarim is going on top of him, and the Flash from the Blitzcrank just to survive. What a, what a Flash coming out from him, and EOD turns their attention to the Drake. Okay, one and one in Dragons here. All right, before they take it out, quick, what strength do you think it's going to be? What? What hex texture? Oh, I think it's gonna be uh, what uh, 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 mountain, 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 mountain. Give me a mountain. Give me a mountain. It's a mountain. You got it. Let's go, dude. I was only saying mountain because I was thinking to myself, what would be the worst, like worst slash best soul for any of these teams to have, and that would be mountain soul. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> if SS got mountain soul, oh, that'd be <laughs> just. It would not go well. Ever, would ever have dying. to put up though. Biggest of fights. So we'll see if uh, uh, Staff Sucks decides to prioritize this Drake. I hope they do. Oh, we get a missed hook coming I in. I got one shot. Sight stepping that really nice, but he's going to get silenced and ignited at the same time, but going to be able to walk out of that one no problem. Look at him. Okay, he's just winning these trades up in the top right now. Camille has like I know. No now, that he's got, uh, now that he's got that bombies and uh, he's got tank stats now that he can just. Uh, do that to Camille is sad. They're gonna try to dive this Ooh, one. Oh, so. flash coming out from both mid laners. Very nice. Marjorie is gonna sh shuffle right inside of there. Yashiro is gonna take a tower shot or two, but he's gonna have to retreat through the enemy's blue side jungle. Dang, I did the same thing you did. It looked like for a moment that they were gonna try to dive the bot lane, but then you were like flashes from the oh. mid laners, and I was like, huh? Oh yeah, dude, I thought they were gonna dive the bot lane too. I had to check the cooldown on the heroic entrance, but now I have to check out the top lane because that fear's gonna come right out. Nature's grabs is gonna barely miss because Hecarim was on the backside of that. He's throwing out his little saplings. The saplings are only gonna slow him up for a little bit. He is just trying to stall for time. Fango has to flash back towards his turret and he's still knocking back Timeless Tinker. Timeless Tinker cannot stick to this tree. He is not sap, he is not glue, he is not adhesive, he is a horse. Yeah, goodness gracious, and good thing is that first tower kind of shrinks the goalie, the other tower is going to split the SS ahead, 
So now they're finally ahead in gold. They were actually down up until this point, but Maokai getting that first tower is going to be really good. He finishes the Sunfire, as you can see, in, in the item slots right there. And, oh, God! Oh, he gets here! Or right from over top of Raptor's Pit. He's going to pop his ultimate right on top of Marjoram as he's just going to Emperor's Divide him, take the tower, and walk away. But here comes the channel. He's going to side step back into the lane so that he doesn't get hit by the knockup. But here comes the pool. Here comes the CC. And here comes the Gray Screen! Solo killed the mid laner. This is what I was talking about. They had to like absolutely like perma snowball their the early game, and they're getting soloed by tanks now. Oh, but to be fair, oh my god, the taunt onto the kite. Oh, what a hook. She just gets one shot for the hook from the blitz crank. Ooh, 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 what a setup from SS. This is what I was talking about. We're in the mid game now, and, and EOD has not like super perma like pushed their lead that they had. And Rift Herald's gonna get some of the mid lane. That will be the mid tower. Top lane's fighting right now. Yo, let's go top lane. Hextech ultimate to pop from the Camille. She's going on top of Banks when they are trading health bars back and forth. CC left and right. But looks like Camille might be able to lose this one. The Saplin is the one who gets the kill. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, we got Margin trying to keep them off of the mid tier too. And he does a successful job, but they still able to get that tower. Down yeah. a little bit of health from that charge from the Herald. Yeah, I got I got the tail end of that mid lane fight. That's when my camera shifted over. It looked like uh, the Galio got stuck under the turret due to the Yumi ulti, and he kind of just like got blown up by it. So Lamau, because you know, diving a tower is kind of silly. Drake will be up in about a minute 24, which both teams, I imagine, are gonna want this. Now, SS probably wins a full-on team fight. I don't know. I mean, oh, actually, they're down kind of crucial ultimate, so maybe if, not. I will say they win a team fight as soon as Sivir gets a PD. Okay. Or at least the Zeal, yes. As soon as she gets Zeal, I say they win a team fight. Okay, and she got that just Zeal. Because, she just that? because the Zeal will give her the attack speed she'll need to just keep like laying down mm -hmm. the ricochets. That's why I said that. No, no, I figured that's what you were saying. Uh, everyone's pretty much right now finished their mythics. Yeah, literally everyone. And Yumi is not going the blow them up build, but I thought she went ahead with the Moonstone instead. She, doesn't, she really doesn't need the blow them up build. She really, oh, what she really needs is to get that Ardent. Oh, you're yeah. literally sad. He's oh, gonna be able to kill the heck from as he's taking the blue buff. Nature's Grass coming out from outside of the river. Timeless Sticker got his Yumi strapped to his chest, and he That's runs away, huge. barely getting out of there with his life. Meanwhile, Kaisa in the top lane, split pushing, trying to get that gold that she desperately needs. But the Hex Flex, the Hex Flex from the Galio, gonna get that taunt right onto one shot. He I does like not that. get the tower. The Hex Flex, I like that. I was trying to say Hex Flash, but uh, yeah. I like Hex Flash. I do too, but the crucial thing is the things that oh, happen. Oh, literally sad, hook. making EO. Yeah. He literally sad with all of these hook shots oh, coming out. out. Hook shot from the Camille, able to get over the top of that wall. With the root coming out from the Maokai, stopping Timeless Tinker in his track. He stopped his block, and they're still taking the dragon. Meanwhile, we do have the really Camille going to have the back. Timeless Tinker going to have to get on top of that dragon. He is in the pit. He walks he's out. Zach is trying to zone him off. Here, here comes the TP from the Camille, and here's the OZ chance. We do have the Margarine. He is going to zone them off. The stun coming out. But the see, but the smite secure coming out from the Zach. He goes down in the process. On the flank back into the river, we do have the Galio walking up. Margarine is able to pick up the Zach. Here comes the shift. Here comes the Emperor's Divine. They take out Bangu. Shut down, go over the Kaisa. They're looking for a little bit more, but they're going to get too slowed up Killer from instinct. the Zach. Planted instinct. in that tri bush. EOD lose the dragon, but they are not going to lose this fight. Kuroki is coming in, going to get that knockoff right onto that gap. Oh! Oh, what a nice stun, what a nice flash. The huge Q coming out from the Kaisa cleans up the Sivir. They may not get the dragon, but they do get the team fight. EOD. Okay, let's just re redact everything that we have said. They lost a team fight. SS had lost a team fight. They got the dragon, but the issue is that they had been poked out a lot prior to that. They just, they just, they just let themselves be poked out. Sure, you know, they get the Mountain Drake, and those little extra stats definitely help the fight last a little longer than it needed to. Oh, my god, just, that was a long fight, and this gold lead, you know, swings back in EOD's favor about a thousand. Oh, okay, I want to see the gold graph. 
Uh, timestamp at 2030. I'm gonna timestamp it right now. I wanna see the gold graph at 2030 just to see what the gold graph looked like up until this point. Cause I have a feeling it looks like a goddamn cosine graph. <laughs> just up and down, up and down. <laughs> Oh, no way he's this Frank trying to steal that away, but Hebron does manage to pick it up. He's going to have to pop his ultimate just to survive. Ooh-wee, that would have been really cheeky. worth it for SS? Sure was. Did you just give up the red buff and just bring your own? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was good. I mean, okay, you get the red buff, you bring your own, what happens? You lose one tier two, they're probably going to rotate top, get the other tier two. Or uh, 100 not. gold ain't worth it, bro. No way they make a Baron call here, do they? Oh They're gonna make a Baron call! Oh my 21 God. minutes! I love Zach coming from the Krugs right into the Baron pit. They don't know! Baron they right off the spawn! Oh my God. Do they know? They no, no they just pinged it, that's all they did! They don't they know! They have zero vision. Camille's walking over and she's gonna walk over just in time to see it taken! SS with the Baron off spawn! Okay, and at this point, you just have to get objectives. So Azir's gonna get that bot lane tier one, which is good. They're gonna keep pushing in other leans and try to get this tier two, maybe. But nope, Kai's just gonna take away some camps. Oh, well, let's go. We got both red buffs off the get off the rip for EOD. I like it. I mean, uh, okay, you, once again, we trade a red buff for Baron this time. Both red buffs for Baron. That's worth. Oh man, I'm actually surprised that they were they did that off rip. They were confident enough in their damage to be able to do the Baron, and I will say they actually did it pretty quickly. All things considered. Oh yeah, I was actually I'm actually kind of shocked on how fast they did it. I'm actually kind of shocked that EOD didn't suspect it either. Like we yeah. saw the like the one or two pings, but that was it. Like nobody like went over to check it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And it's it's like they knew, but like they're like, nah, probably not. And by the time Camille got there, it was gone. So like, I think they yeah, knew, the but didn't want to check. And the best part is, is that if you look at the vision map for the side of SS, you oh can god, see Azir's that, getting collapsed. Uh, you can see that red side uh, quadrant just lit up. They could see everything. Ember survived, but here comes Time is Tinkerer right into the face of literally sad. Literally sad is going to make that all the DC, but he falls down. Double kill over to the SS. Ooh, the two meatballs followed by the third to follow, and it's actually just straight up amazing. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, SS is playing the team comp I kind of thought they were gonna do play through the Sivir. Just stick a stick a wall in front of her and just let, let her, her just, auto. Let her auto right click to victory, baby. Uh, yeah. Vango getting really good damage right onto this Camille. He's gonna jump right in for Ooh. that root. A Hextech ultimatum Jesus. and the nature scraps right to follow. The top laners are just duking it out left and right. Tier 2 in the bot lane does fall. Oh, but that huge shield coming out from the Camille. But she is still taking a lot of damage from the minions. Has to hook shot out of there. I good. Oh, and we do have a pause coming up. And we do have a reconnect in session. Okay. Wow. Uh, I look quick little it, from the mid laner. What did, what did I? What did I? What did I say in draft? What did I say? I said even I, though they have no damage, if they it, like the EOD has to push the early game. They did a little bit, but once they got they, a couple of those leads, they didn't accelerate them. Their early game is Camille, though. That's the the thing, though. Oh my God. What is this DTP? What is S that? SS is. Vision line is just so good. Oh, oh she the missed the caught out. But with that being said, the rest of EOD is going to be able to walk right into the river. Here comes Tiny Seeker with that Yumi strapped to his hip. That is his gun. That is his six shooter. That is his pet. Oh my goodness. EOD claimed the river and they give it up immediately. What is going on with those guys? I don't know. It's like they have, they literally have the advantage with their positioning at the moment. They're probably in the civil because oh, they're probably going to try to hook this. No, the EOD is so smart. Yeah, that's why if this fight starts, I think it goes heavily in favor of the channel, the time coming out, but the Timeless Tinker is going to have that Yumi popping his ult right on top of him. Nature's Grass coming from the blue side, but the rest of EOD is just laying down the damage as much as they can oh do. My Here God. comes the fear coming out from the headroom. Sivir is managed to pick up the headroom, but the knockoff coming right on two. The Sivir is doing so much damage. Emperor's Divide not going to be able to do enough. It is a 2v1. Marjorie can't take them all out, but he takes out one. On Watch his soul. It's going to cake him out as well. Yumi is going to 1v1 to Fangu, who's full of hell. Assess aces EOD in the end. Oh my god, you were right.
tried the second the fight got split, it was pretty much over. I mean, granted, the Azir still got a double kill at the end of that, but oh my goodness. The amount of just beef. I want I want you to Twitch chat. I want you to think about the biggest, biggest pack of ground beef you buy at your local grocery store. That's what was basically rolling in the river protecting the Sibber that whole time. Just a giant packet of beef. Just keeping so, the Sibber safe. So I'm gonna I'm gonna contradict your statement, but ultimately, but ultimately I'm gonna improve it. It's not the biggest pack of ground beef you can get at the grocery store. Now picture the biggest pack of ground beef you can get. It's alive. It's called a it's called a it's called a longhorn steer. Long and if you've steer. never seen what those things look like, go ahead and Ouch. Google it, cause those those boys are huge. They're huge. And there's four of them protecting Sivir. I just think of like just a little calf being the Sivir, and then just four of them <laughs> just in front of him like He's sitting out in the pasture. I got one shot, literally gonna get one shot here. Three members of SS are just gonna pile right on top of him. Chain C seed of victory, baby. And then this opens up the Baron when it's fun. To Baron about 50 seconds. seconds. I mean, oh, dude. I just gotta give it to SS. Their vision is amazing. It's so good. You have the, the, the Azir turret coming up, but that's not really gonna do much of anything. This this next Baron that, that SS probably does get. Oh, Timeless Tinker gonna face check literally sad. Uh, okay. And he's just gonna be very confused as he walks to the Azir turret. Yeah, I, I gotta admit, like, they just lost all control of their jungle. They can't really walk in without there being like 19 wards. Yeah, oh, that'd I'm be kidding. really nice. Back in the but day when you could. They are do doing that. a good job of recognizing that they have to start sweeping. So yes. I, I do gotta give it to them. Mm -hmm. Oh, does he get it? He doesn't get it. That's actually unlucky. So we got some resets coming in here. I do not see resets. So Blitz can increase that. Sivir has her third item in coming oh, in yeah. with that I infinity you, edge. So our calf, our baby calf, just got upgraded to a baby steer. She's not a full grown bull yet. She's still a baby steer. Uh, she's gonna but so she's still going to have them old dome, old uh, longhorns protecting her still. Oh my god, and this next fight is going to be brutal depending on which way it goes. Now, unless they catch out the Sivir here, which would or be they, grand. They might be able to catch out the Blitzcrank here as he's coming in sweeping uh, for vision right there. Oh, they're not going to do it. I oh, thought please. they would. Oh, they are. Oh, oh my goodness, they're gonna do it. But they're gonna do it. We have a kill bush. And we have the castle right. from, from the Blitzcrank. This chain CC is too much. Hexagon oh, made him continue now. But Nature Traps is gonna try to lock down that. Oh, and it does a heroic entrance for the victory. Well, the triple kill. Oh my goodness, SS renamed their team name to CC because the CC is too much. Quadra kill for the Sivir. And they can just end the game now! The static death rush! Wave. There's oh. more of you than the Dinko's turrets! Dear god, that was amazing! This is the, the classic fanatic death rush coming in and just, just win the game! Just do it! No, do it! Gonna oh, they're not gonna end! <laughs> they're trolling! Oh my god, they had two coming up, now three, so they wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, they do just, I think they just take Baron here though, right? Yeah, I mean, I do believe in the possible hacker and steal. He does have ult, so if he just kind of Hail Marys it to try to get it. But I, actually, let's see how fast they're doing it, I take it back. Oh, never mind, everybody gone before you get there. So, never mind, yeah, free Baron. Yeah, they now. Sivir with an IE at that, so she can shred it. Uh, and top tower was taken also in response. SS is macro. It's pretty good. I am a little salty though. Their math, their math macro is actually pretty good. It's insane. Know. It's so it's, good. It's honestly pretty good. They this the vision line is perfect. They keep it in the spots that it's necessary in those choke oh, yeah. points. That's why they cut up the meal. They're just they're, and they're they're gonna rotate their vision now down to the river to the preparation for this dragon soul that's coming up for them. Eod getting first uh, presence in the river though and first vision, so that's good. I do expect though. Camille's gonna back, get her next part of her item, and then TP. Death Cap is picked up from Azir, though. They could just honestly sack this dragon and go towards their base, so I'm that's not really sure. Doing. I think that's what they're doing. Yeah, they're willing to just kind of like, yeah, I, let's go end the game. I think that's what they're doing. 
Uh, Galio's gonna be here in the river to stop uh, Bax, but here comes the rest of SS. Looking down, a solo Camille. Camille's gonna have to fend all oh, these no, minions. Mom. But here comes the rest of EOD. Heroic just right on top of that. Zack, but here it comes. They didn't knock anybody oh, up. What a what a go from his kit. Plus the taunt, the Emperor's Divide may be able to push them back, but it's not going to be able to do enough damage. Yeshro has to pop his and go golden. Bangu is still laying down the siege onto the Nexus. Here comes the Zack. Here comes the Sipper. Here comes the rest of the team. Here comes the TP coming out from the Azir. But it's not going to be enough. It's going to get blown out of the sky. Game one. Over to SS. That was the siege first game of this series and that was awesome oh my god just the amount of damage that just kept coming through you know it it, it was a bait because at first eod did you know get a good a good start in the game but just as it progressively went on just the tanks got tankier maokai stabilized that top lane i think that solo kill helped a lot solo kill or was it a gank kill whatever one of the kills he got it was in the river the river kill he got helped so much to stabilize that top lane and like what happened <laughs> I see Haru has glue. What is that? You are what is going on there? I cannot hear you. Oh my goodness. I don't think she can I'm hear sorry. us. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I'm good. I was, I, I mute, unmuted the wrong program. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm, I heard someone mention glue. So, oh, Maokai and glue. Yeah. Oh. And then, hey, I also have... A uh, question pinging, like, oh my gosh, this <laughs> ping. Um, I have a little Blitzcrank doll I actually bought from L LCS when I oh, went there actually, to Vancouver. Really cool. And then I have the, oh, so I have um, three Poros. If it can make it to three grams, it'll, the first prize goes to SS, right? Who's SS? Anyways, oh, I had to you. say, um, Zach, first of all, Zach, Blitzcrank, and Maokai. Like that's that's a scary combination as it is. It's like gross. I I see that and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm crying. Like, but you know, like even even if I didn't see all three of those necessarily in a game, Zach Jungle for me is just like terrifying. And you had mentioned his like they had such good map control and like vision. It's probably because Zach specifically requested hey team i need to know at all times where the jungler is i need to know at all times what's going on and so i can predict and like be five steps ahead of everybody and like gang really well and yeah it's just ugh, it's disgusting that was a really good game though to watch eod had really good uh, team fights so i will say they were pretty good but yeah, yeah Zipper, it, it, exactly what i said ha what happened is what happened if EOD yeah. did not snowball the game, they were going to lose. SS would outscale them in tank stats, and it was GG from there. I you think it was see, the second Drake. I, I have a note that actually is dedicated to you, DBZ. It's, may I read it? It says, DBZ, yep. your predictions were on point this game. It's like you have some sort of psychic power. So that's my note to you. See, it's when I'm cast it's only when I'm casting with Hyper. I can predict where kindred marks are gonna be, what Drake is gonna be, and then on the flip side, Hyper can do the same. It's like we're yeah, like, like mind melding. Yeah, so Hyper has a really good intuition too. And then put you both together, it's just like ultimate. <laughs> You're like fortune tellers? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have I have a different kind of sense. Uh, <laughs> I just I just know I just know where the fight's gonna happen. Or when it's gonna happen? Like I just like I could just I could see it like playing out in my head, oh my like just from the positioning itself. Yeah. I, well, I feel like that you got you both got good game sense. I won't deny that. That's. Anyways, that game. So, what were your favorite parts of the game specifically? I know you you had talked a lot, but if if your mind is not melted right now. Can you mention what what was a couple highlights for you? Um, I think I don't know from uh, Freak's point of view. Um, he could probably tell. Um, but I like in the part of the game where I actually had a voice, and then there was a dragon fight, and it got really hyped, and I think Freak heard it, but my voice disappeared. Then it like it just it was like oh this is game one now we're getting destroyed. Let's go. This is how oh. I know tonight is going to be insane. 
Um, we're going to have a three-game series because there is absolutely no way that uh, EOD goes out like that. They're not going to no. have a game one like that and not answer <laughs> no. back. There is yeah, absolutely you... no way. Yeah, yeah we'll absolutely. have to wait and see what the adaptations are for them in game two. I imagine the Blitzcrank will be taken off the table naturally. And uh, um, it'll, it'll come out. Uh, I would, say I would so. think so. I would think so. I would say so. But my Blitzcrank. I love Blitzcrank. He's so, especially, especially when he runs. He he waddles. He's like, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So, three games. I oh, hope so. anyways, we we're gonna take we're gonna take it to draft, guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Boy, it is gonna be heck, dick. Yeah, here same band so far too. Here comes the. I mean, I mean, if. I mean, there's a reason why they banned him in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, honestly, I would, I would actually believe it if EOD even first picks Blitz themselves, or even this time taking away that. I think EOD is gonna go for a Maokai first pick here because the support and the top laner both play, both play that Maokai. Um, so like, I'm not even, I'm not even shocked that that's what no, came out. I'm not either. Maybe the Sivir comes out again. Oh, uh, uh, I'm a Sivir and Coastlaw, so the jungler and the support. Okay. So it's the jungle support flex. So it could uh, be either one. Here. Yeah, we'll find out, that's for sure. And we got the I Zach cover once like, again. I do like this Zach coming out. Oh, <laughs> I, I love Zach. He's like actually my favorite champion. But I don't play him. <laughs> I wish I could play him, but he's so... I want them to make like a gentleman Zach. I'm waiting for the penguin suit. Like it's on Reddit and subreddit. Everyone's like, "Gentleman Zach, he will oh, like be the best Sedgwick. prom date." Oh my god. Oh, I'm gonna stop your point right there. Okay, so Sedge Twenty coming in is actually really, really good and a, a, like um a very, very intelligent answer to the Maokai, I would say. And then we have a Trundle. Hover. Trundle. <laughs> if Trundle gets locked in, that's an every answer into that. Like, oh my god, it's like, these teams just know, like, what the good picks are. Are we watching Worlds 2.0? Is that what this is right now? Is this the actual NA? Are we watching legit NA that was supposed to be in Worlds? I think so. Oh, oh they I think only think of one thing. I can think of one thing that would make you first three picks. Disgusting, and I want to see if it pops up before I say it. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it alone then. So either here they're going to pick their AD carry or their mid laner, I would assume. I don't see a reason to pick a support yet. But that's Unless Maokai is a support, because this might that's be Maokai support Trundle Jungle. And that's what I'm thinking. Because... Okay. That is not what I had in mind, but I love it anyways. What did you I was money? saying, you put you get Trundle, you get Maokai, and then you throw Fiore in the mix. Oh, God. I was yeah. like, if you're gonna fucking play tank into my team, then I'm gonna whip And then they out, lock Vayne! And oh. they whip out Vayne! Yes, dude! What an answer to three tanks! You pull Vayne out, and That's you just have really Sejuani insane. peel for her, like, oof. Oh, this game's gonna be gross. Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be so good. Oh, they banned the Kogma. Yup. Yeah, naturally. Yep. I think that was. The, I think. I think that was the plan here. Plan here from EOD was to. Oh yeah. Do something, some sort of hyper carry for their AD carry. I mean, they still a few open, so we'll just have to wait and see. But I mean, they... I, see, I can honestly, uh, I can honestly con like, I can argue with Nyla this game. Yeah, I can see that. I, I can really argue with Nyla being a really good. Um, for EOD right now. I don't know if it's like the best choice, but I can argue it. You know what I mean? I don't know if they're, um, I don't remember if they're AD carry plays Nyla, to be completely honest. Do you know hey. who's still open? A lot of people. Let's ADCs. Crank. Oh, ADCs? Uh, I mean, Kaisa, Jin. I could just keep naming all of them off. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you, you obviously didn't see the one I was hinting at, so. Um, oh, no. We did We did get the, the double Yumi uh, Lulu ban, so that's really smart by EOD, but. But they still do the Soraka. I mean, which one would you prefer, honestly? I think I'd prefer the Soraka Lulu. Over the other two. Lulu, really? You got yeah, Trundle you don't going have the into healing the face from either the team? Two. I the Polymorph, though. 
I that, think that, 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 that's I think the fine. polymorph is gonna be worse for EOD, uh, considering how like the direction they're going. Oh, Ooh. I like Cassiopeia here. I only say I would rather take I the Lulu. Like nice. It. I only I say like I would rather it. uh take the Lulu instead, is because you have healing both on Soraka and and uh oh Senna. fasting Senna possibly. Nah, there's no. <laughs> I mean, they they no way they do, I'm saying there's no way they do fasting Senna, is what I'm saying. I don't, especially not into Vayne. Yeah, you really don't want to do a fasting Senna. But then again, you've got to poke the shit out of her, so. Yeah, that's um, the, that's Malachi, but Maokai Senna can poke poke pretty good. Um, Vayne and Soraka do have pretty good sustain. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see what their mid lane is going to be locked in as. Uh, my Murdinger. The ultimate dissuasion to engage unless there isn't a chance it hasn't been done since the spring split but it could be soraka mid hyper support hyper support was done yesterday and it's done in champions queue so i mean if we're gonna do that it could be hyper apc soraka support vein mid vein mid yeah i mean if we're if we're gonna play the what if game then that's 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 what we're gonna play <laughs> i'm just so oh my god Goodness. So 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 Dude, excited. I am so excited. I think EOT got the better uh team comp all around this time around. Um yeah. and I and I say that off the Cassiopeia pick. And I think that's where I think that's like mm, yes. That it's the that was like Vane. Oh god, it was so good. Sejuani, Vayne, Zach, like you like all three of those champs. Um but Haru, what do you think of the draft so far? Okay, I think I had unmuted my mic and I was speaking as you guys were casting, but I was saying yeah. that I love Zach. It was perfect. And though. then <laughs> I love Zach so. Oh, it was? Okay, great. Yeah. I'm so sorry. But I have to emphasize, I love Zach. Um, but like Mundo, he he's a little scary. Um, I, I feel like EOD is trying to take it to late game. And then SS, they're just like, we're going to take Vayne and make her the carry or Heimdinger, I guess. But. Um, Zach and Sejuani can actually team up really well. Um, if Zach can land on them and Sejuani can CC, then the team fight can really go in like Bane's favor, along with like Soraka healing them, and then the the ultimate finish off with whatever Trundle Hunter top. decides. But oh, is it Trundle Top? It's Trundle Top. Oh, so who is it? It's Maokai Jungle. Maokai. I didn't. I say it. I said it beforehand, and I said Trundle Jungle. Anyways, no, it's Trundle Top. Yeah, that's right. So then it's. I said it. I, 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 even though I said it at the beginning of the draft, as soon as Maokai got locked in, and then I saw Trundle, my, I just backed out of what I was saying. What is wrong with me? Okay. <laughs> I mean, we take those. So. <laughs> well, that's interesting. So Rock Amid, you were kidding. I told you. Oh my god, Wait, I told what? you! Soraka Wait, mid, pulling out the LS Soraka mid, where you pretty much just build Moonstone and just perma heal everyone. I, oh, it's I, I, your support. I love Soraka. She's one of my favorite like supports to play. So I'm excited to see her kill everybody, but I've I've never seen a successful Soraka mid. So this is gonna be interesting to see. The Q is gonna be gross. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't expect it to be a full damage Soraka though. Unfortunately, that's the sad part. We don't get that luxury Wait, of so seeing who, that. So who who's who's she versing in the mid lane? Is it Cassiopeia? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so Stop. that's gonna be kind of annoying. What are they drafting? Oh, it is fasting Senna. It's fasting Senna with Mundo. Okay, so yeah, ew. that's gonna be that's <laughs> gonna be like really annoying for the bot lane. But you know, you got like the high Heimdinger, like. What? Distance, you know, but <laughs> okay. What is this are, you, are you okay? I, I really okay, wish I that, like, a here. I wish chat could see like the client that we're seeing because we you know we, we had this whole mitigated like thought process of what we're thinking that we were going to be seeing, and then they completely blew it out of the water. You know, what EOD was, was some absolutely spicy picks. Yo, what was what's funny is is that we gave these what ifs. And they turned out to be true. <laughs> <laughs> See? No, I have to include Hyper in the title because both of you are on point. What? Hyper. I do not believe Hyper. It. DBZ. Your predictions were on point 
tonight, not this game. I got one tonight. this draft. Freak was able to get the whole team. <laughs> I cannot believe that. I like, would have never, I would have never, never imagined Mundo fat and Senna as fasting Senna. I would have imagined maybe Trundle. Trundle? Yeah, Trundle and Senna. Never, ever would I w imagine a, a Mundo, but it makes a lot of sense. Are you serious? I've actually versed so many Trundle bots, and it exactly. is incredibly annoying when he gets to level 6, and you can't kill him as an AD carry because you're still trying to build up to the late game, and he's like, actually, I'm a, I'm technically a top laner, but I can build up faster than you. Oh, yo, no. I get it. <laughs> 100. 100. I get it. That's what makes more sense in the bot lane, not a Mundo. <laughs> no, yeah, I, it's going to be super hard to into the vein. I mean, it, it, this game is going to come down to, it's going to be a bot lane game entirely, I, I would say. Because if Vayne just gets too far ahead, this game is over before it even starts for EOD. I, I want That's EOD true. to win this game so bad. Oh, I'm, mixed, I'm like conflicted. Are, they're, they're, are they the underdogs? I, I mentioned I love EOD underdogs. EOD is technically the underdogs. Yeah. Okay, so we're all, you know, automatically for me, like, I have lots of respect for all teams, but underdogs for me, so. EOD, please bring it to game three, and that'll be really exciting. So we're going to take a break, guys. Stay tuned.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game two, EOD versus SS. SS with one under their belt, looking for a clean sweep. EOD looking to take it to a game three. I hope you got your popcorn. I hope you got your butter. I hope you got your seat belt. I hope you're locked and loaded because this game is going to be one hell of a banger and a bloodbath. Freak. That draft. I, cannot I can't believe. believe I'm still looking at this setup, man. So, for those of you who don't know, Soraka Mid was a pick that was a, like a, pr a pretty good priority pick in the early early parts of this season. Those supportive mid laners, you would see Soraka Mid, Maokai, oh, not Maokai, so Ivern Mid. Yeah, Ivern. I'm are. just as shocked as you are. And it, it's just they would build support of be able to get those like sustain ish build but you would also usually have an enchanter as the other support but in this case you know they went ahead with the heimer support which again is only a champion you see in champions queue so the fact that like these hilarious little like pro play and champions queue things are being whipped out is absolutely hilarious to me soraka will have a pretty bad time farming against the cassiopeia but like that's not what she's playing for she's not playing to get ahead she's just playing to get her items be able to get to sustain the vein later in those fights. Like Cass is gonna win these trades easy peasy. But like yeah. later, when she gets that Groomstone, I, I assume she's going Groomstone. Maybe Shirelia is a. It's not sure. We'll see if the game goes on. I could also be wrong, and she might go full AP, like a ram full AP build, and that would be absolutely hilarious to me. But in this case, not expecting too much out of the Soraka at the moment. I want to see. A, I, I want to see a War Mox. Give me Moonstone. Give me war mugs, give me redemption. That's what I want out of the Soraka. Oh I'm still absolutely blown away by the draft that we got. Um, but uh, I gotta stop being blown away and I gotta get back in business because level two top laners are going at it. The pillar and the lockdown coming out from the trundle. I like it. Yeah, I mean, in, in the bot lane, you're not gonna really expect terror. Oh, Ooh, nice sidestep by the coleslaw, but he is just gonna oh, get slowed up and locked down, and that's a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean that's that's what we expect to have happen. It's a double range bot lane, even even slightly ranged because Heimerdinger is obnoxious. Yeah, but they're just gonna like win this lane 100. percent It's just about surviving, like I said in the first game. The Mundo is just gonna want to survive. I'm a little concerned that they would put Mundo down here in the in a duo lane. Instead of in a solo lane, my yeah, own personal but opinion. At the same time, like, who would you rather have in the solo lane? The Trundle or the Mundo? I don't know. Mundo's gonna get tanky regardless. Yeah, that's fair. And, like, he's actually CSing pretty well, only 8 CS yeah, down. Um, for, you know, for an ADC on a melee champion, it's, it's, uh, the autoing. Like, it feels awkward walking up in a melee distance, unless you're me right. and you always walk in a melee distance. <laughs> also, oh, wait, you, you're one of those who does that? It's not intentional, man. It just happens sometimes. Yes, I do a click. In case you were wondering, that's fair. I was playing with but, my coworkers and I kind of ran it down on Tristana. I was like super, so far ahead, like 12 kills up, and I'm like, yeah, I got this. Went melee range into two of their tanks and just died. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it happened. In the middle, but though. timeless tank were gonna try to look for a gank here, oh, 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 but Soraka was able to get that move speed. Meanwhile, in the top lane, the stun coming out from the Sijuani. Fengao gonna be stopping the Trundle's pursuit of an early trip to the tower. Okay. Man, man. I mean, at this point, we're just watching noodles beat each other. I do see yeah. that the Trundle has the long sword, so I'm yeah. kind of wondering, like, what's the plan here? Maybe he goes for the Sunder. I doubt it. Maybe I he goes for the Bork, Bork build. Bork. I was about to say, I think he's going to go Bork first here. Because um, that's going to be really, really oh, good goodness. for him. Nice pillar to knock him back into that tower. And she's like winning all of these trades too. Like yeah, the, you know, the, the E, the E is like what's helping her win these trades like super mega hard. Mundo is ahead in CS right now. What is going on? Um, oh, he was I don't ahead. Think that should happen. I don't think that's supposed oh, to happen. But here comes the Tron. Here comes the Zach right over the top of the wall with that good knock stun. up. The heel is popped. The stun into the wall is good. And the first blood over to the Heimerdinger. But here comes I one shot, and he's looking oh for the Lexion. God. Coming up from the one shot, but he's gonna take one shot from the tower and go down. Oh, I actually thought he would get the trade kill, but the heel came out to kind of stop the extra bit of damage. 
super unlucky, but Zack, doing what Zack does best, he's just eating over the wall and suddenly he's there. I'm actually surprised. I guess we didn't really see too much of that happening because of the top lane. I think Vayne and Heimer intentionally let them push in because, like, that's a lane you should never be pushed in. Oh, yeah. But you, I, if, if you're not supposed to get pushed in and you suddenly find yourself pushing the other laner in, that's a red flag. <laughs> yeah. But when you always when uh, when silver players lane against me nowadays, they're always shoving into me, and they think they're winning lane, but it's a bait because I want you to shove in. I'm gonna. Yeah, you. I, I think I probably would have thought the same thing. I would have been like, "This is a double range matchup. How are we pushing them in?" And then two seconds later, there's the jungle in my face. Like, oh, that's why. So yeah, really, no, really you, good. You, got, you always got to be cognizant of that. You're like, oh, I'm suddenly shoving in the other lane. Um, they have a lot of mana. What is going on? And I'm, not... a, I'm a Dr. Mundo, this should not be happening. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that he's still up in, like, he's still, like, even in CS, granted, you know, the kills will make the goal a little lopsided, I but just, still. I just don't get why Dane is playing so passively. Granted, they have the bigger wave, but I don't know. Um, but if you look at our minimap, we do see a Maokai sitting in the, sitting in the bush right there. He's right now, oh, he's about to walk Ooh, he's into gonna stop, and he's gonna go right, right on top of Fangal, but here comes it the other jungler too. for that counter gank stun coming out onto Timeless Tinker. Timeless Tinker's gonna get stunned up, but here Good comes all. that Trundle, gonna be laying down a waste of the health bar for that Zax, gonna be able to sidestep that really nicely, but that chain mail from the Sejuani is just gonna come in very nice, claim that kill, bot lane duking it out. Got a nice root from Coastlaw onto the Lexion, and that is all she wrote for the bot lane. EOD backs off. All right, so you know, no trade kill happening in the top side there. Just the fact that Sejuani was six and Trundle was not, and neither was um, Maokai at the start of that fight. Just unlucky XP advantage. And you'd think with Trundle being up 12 CS, he would be, you know, better. Oh, shit, it's great. It's oh great my good. Let's go, Cassiopeia. Okay, hitting that Q was actually pretty huge. Dude, the twin fang. Oh my goodness, here comes Zach. Here he channels it up. He's looking for the knock up. He's gonna be gonna disengage that. Top laner's duking it out. Stun coming out from Fangal. And here comes a huge trade in the what bot is lane. Going on? Dr. Mundo pops his ult. And the trundle is able to clean up the Sejuani. You may yes. have a big pig. And tonight I'm dining on pork. Mm, pork does sound good. But we have the Sheen coming in for the Trundle, which tells me he's going for the Sunder build. They should know. Okay, they dropped the ward and they probably saw Zach for like a split microsecond. Okay. And is able to keep her health advantage in this lane. I am genuinely envious. I wonder who dies here the second the bot lane hits six, because Hyrule's getting pretty low and I wonder if I think, I think it might. I don't know. Zach is still hovering, that's the only thing. Yeah, but Timeless Tinker is here now. He is level 6, Nature's Grasp is up. Oh, but one shot. Uh, his passive is down. Oh, I don't know. Didn't have all yet. Now he has all. He's got all. He popped in there before. Unwanted Soul is also here too for that lane gang. Nature's Grasp is going to be able to come through, but they lose one. Now it's 3v2, and that ultimate from the Zach oh, is just laying no. down ways. Timeless Tinker is trying to take one in return, but the damage from the vein is too much for him to handle. I uh, should have gave it to the vein for the triple, but I mean, she's already 3-0, and oh, and I guess Heimer being 2-0 oh is not that bad. Trundle is still just like going to war Trundle over this Sejuani. for left and right, gonna be walking down Fangal. Fangal is gonna be able to get that slow. The Glacial Prism is up, but his health bar is really low at the moment. He's gonna have to be very, very careful how he does that. SS is on the dragon, but we do have pings from EOD looking for a tower dive here in the top lane. Oh, well, All the lanes pushing, they're not gonna do it. Okay. Yeah, Cassiope is just gonna channel that back. Cancel and reissue. Cancel and reissue. What is she gonna do? What is Wait, she gonna side? Oh, she's go. going for it. She's going for the gank. She's gonna be looking for Fang out. She's gonna be able to get that ground. She misses that ultimate. Ooh, what a terrible, yeah, terrible so feeling that must feel. Petrifying oh. gaze right on the edge. Oh, Glacial oh. Prism to stop the back, but it doesn't connect. I just saw the lost chapter from the Soraka. She's going to ARAM, blow them up, build, I think. They need I the AP, so... I, would have, I mean, they don't need the AP, they have the Heimer. They have the Heimer, but oh my goodness, the Soraka lane, potentially the full AP build. 
Oh, uh, because I don't think Lost Chapter builds in anything supportive was. Oh, you know what I'm thinking? Okay, what you got? Everfrost. Oh, it's Everfrost. Oh, <laughs> our mindset was in the exact same spot. <laughs> Everfrost, that's what I was thinking. God, this is gonna be ridiculous. I think that'd be better than that. Not gonna lie. Oh, he was trying to oh. again. He pops. Bango is able to hit that chainmail left and right, but here comes Zach. He is here. He has got the Sejuani pass locked and loaded. He goes airborne. Timeless uh, Tinker pops his nature's grasp. They take out the Trundle, but is Timeless Tinker able to take out Fango? Unwanted Soul is keeping him off of that Sejuani. He gets slowed and he does able to get it with that Bramble Smash. I just want to also point out a mildly hilarious fact that every single person except for Senna has the um the the the, the, the Kindle gem. Ah! I love it. <laughs> Everyone building a little bit of health on the side of POD, which kind of makes sense, because that vein is going to be a problem in the next like five minutes. If I'm being completely honest, when she finishes that. Oh, uh, she's clear. three and zero. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's gonna be a problem. Still, just, just a little bit of a problem as a vein. No, I do got a hand it to. I do got a hand it to. I got one shot. Being able to stay even and even a little bit ahead in CS. Uh, no, he. I mean, after he just died, uh, he fell behind. But being able to stay relatively even with this vein um, in CS is really good. Yeah, we got Zach doing his thing. He's just gonna slingshot over from that side of the tower if he does. Yeah, he was to looking for that lane gang, um, but he's just gonna be on the other side of that cove. Oh, thank goodness EOD finally learned their lesson. Yeah, I think at that point <laughs> you don't even stay there. All right, Coleslaw, are you gonna complete the Kindle gym by? Nope, all right. We have Athemis Chains ah. coming in first for the Moon Dome, which I would say is very good. You Dude, attach it to any one it to of the these. the vein. Yeah, any one of these squishies, and most likely it is gonna be the vein. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie able to get that back or sitting on top of that ward, I love it. Uh, this is gonna be a spicy, spicy game, and Trundles is gonna keep going to war up here on the top side against the Sejuani. Now, when it comes to team fights, you know I... what the best part is? Uh, Sejong is not even losing these trades that hard. No. Like, he's taking these trades and, like, winning out on most of them. Oh, um, not that much, unfortunately. <laughs> uh oh, that stun coming up for Fang out, but he does get that dash away. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and just crash this wave in, and I assume recent. We have the Rift Herald. I'm actually shocked. Look at the tower plays. He hasn't taken a single play, where Trump was taking two. Yeah, and the Rift Herald here will mitigate some of that pressure coming on from the Trundle. They'll just drop it probably. Yeah, mid lane has one plate down. I'm not entirely sure. They only have one plate. It. SS might be playing a hell of a game, but they only got one plate. Yeah, and EOD is about to... Uh, you are greeting for a plate, my friend. Oh, you do not need to be standing there, Marjorie. Your jungle may be in the area, but it's not where you need to be. Okay, so they're just dropping in mid. Yeah, might as well. You got all your members there. And this will crash into the tower, get some needed oh, gold in. Oh, from the downtown. Oh, okay. that's right. He's going to be able to miss. But, okay. yes. but that dangerous grass lands through members. Oh, and the glacial prism is going to connect. Cassiopeia goes down. Here comes a fight. It's a 3v4. The saplings are going to be slowing them up little by Ooh. little. Poke from the Soraka. The poke from the Heimerdinger. It's too much. Coastlaw has to splash out of there. I got one shot. He's going to be able to eat that CC and walk out of it clean. He picks up his passive. And now he's just going to be throwing hatchet okay. after hatchet. But that Soraka does heal damage. He is ignoring Dude, her! And Zhao is just sticking to the story. He doesn't care about Fangal. Here comes the pillar. He knocks her back. She gets slowed up. Here comes down the ignite. The damage from the Trundle is so huge. He has to punch his own pillar. They get the kill in the mid lane. The heal from the Soraka is able to save that Hyperdigger. But they're looking for a little bit more. The and they don't able to get it. Unwanted Soul is unwanted in the lane right now, but he doesn't care. He's channeling that long range engage. Does not take it. And they just, they list the fight whittle down. And POD wins that, right? Yeah, statistically, yeah. I mean, they get the first tower in the, in the process of that. I mean, they, they get a kill. We did get a kill too! So in all in all, yeah, pretty good trade for them. And they might get the mid lane tower here. Yeah, oh, never mind, he's gonna get close out. Yeah, this literally Stad has to, uh, has to stop channeling that back right there. If he doesn't, I think they take tier two, uh, tier one right there. Tier one, yeah. No, I okay. wanted soul. Oh, no. I think yes, they're setting up the jungler now. Margarine understands what he's doing. Here comes 
Here comes the Reynolds no. oh. the Mondays, and two members of VOD shut down over to the Maokai. They take on one at Sol. His passage is Brock. The little blobs will not be able to live long enough to see another light of day. Margarine claims the Zack. They claim the tier one in the bot lane, and they start to get back into this game. Absolutely excellent timing coming in for both uh, Sejong and Timeless Tinker to be there. Just, it, oh, what are you doing, Margarine? You're greeting. But able to get a lot of healing. Or is he going to win this? Yeah, but oh, strong, okay. but the stun is even stronger. The conqueror may not be able to stay right in. Oh, my God. Come on. She claims. She claims literally sad. Literally sad because he could not 1v1 the Cassiopeia with 20 health. Nature's Crash locks up the Soraka, and Coleslaw farms it out. <laughs> what a what a game! game Gold is dead even! It's turning into a bloodbath, like I said. Okay, and there it in the captain. Yeah, like the Cassiopeia pick coming in absolutely clutch. She puts the Miasma on top of the vein so she can't tumble forward and has Dude, to walk out of it. Second item, Morello Namicon. Massive. Yeah, for the Soraka especially. That's like the name of the game. Is like Anti-heal. Oh my god, I just saw what Maokai had to He has uh, Amethema's chain. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, the Amethema's chain is coming in. So that's probably, probably going to go into the Soraka because if Mundo has his on the vein already, they'll put it on someone else. <laughs> Good lord. Let's find message. out who it's attached to. That is an excellent question. It says... It, it does not say, I guess. So that symbol... Oh wait, I guess I can click on the champion thing and see. Uh, it is the source. I got one. Oh, never mind. It doesn't say! Um, he's got his... I got one shot. Damn stick up. Okay, ah. um, I got one shot. It has stuck his on Vayne. Yep. And, um, oh, I see where we can do that. And Maokai stuck his on literally sad. He should have seen that one coming. Oh, yeah, you're right there. It is there, it is there. Oh, my goodness. Shenzhen looking for a little bit more. But he has three people. Like SS wants some. He's able to dodge that glacial prism. But Lexicon just stuns him into the wall. The chain CC, the damage, it's too much. But in the mid lane, they claim the Hyper Digger solo kill going over to Margarine. And now they turn their attention to that tier two mid lane. I don't think the Soraka is going to be able to stop this. But here comes Zach over the top of the wall. He doesn't get anyone. Oh, no. I got one shot still has his passive locked and loaded. He does get silenced, but SS don't get anything for that mid lane play. EOD coming out strong. Oh my goodness. So SS sends up three people to go deal with the Trundle, who's just ran up, just free pushing and not caring about what's coming at him. But the trade is mid lane tower falls, solo kill onto the Cassiopeia, and like, it's, it's they're just losing on multiple fronts right now at the moment. The gold is still dead even, but like, it seems like EOD is in a much stronger position right now, and like you have. They are going to gradually pull ahead, and it's going to come down to a fight. I want to say, I'm not going to say this Drake, because if we notice, this is another Mountain Soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two in a row, two team comps that are beefy as hell, and yeah, uh, two games in a row, just two games in a row. I just, I love that, but. It's gonna come down, I wanna say, to fourth Drake. So not this Drake, but the next He's Drake. He's not gonna do this, he's gonna oh, do it. Oh, he is, and Jawa's gonna go for it. Bang out the gonna airborne. Too. He's gonna have to drop, and he's gonna have to dash away. Meanwhile, EOD's gonna try to keep the attention and pressure in this mid lane so that Toronto can pursue, and so that Cassiopeia can just keep free pushing. They are gonna start sending people up there to her. Is it kinda bundled this, up right now? I love this 3-1 comp that they got going on right mm -hmm. now. <clears throat> Zach is... Trying to figure out what he wants to do. Cassiopeia shoves that lane in and gonna start farming those crugs. Yeah, and they yeah, know she, she should not be up there right now because yeah, they're she, she, way she up sees there. the other members down there in the mid lane, so she knows she has time to at least clear this way before she Here gotta back Zach. out. Here comes Zach, and all they're sending for support was at Soraka. I think as soon as she doesn't see Bane is when she backs off. Oh, and does she just want to one Zach here? No, she does. He's gonna he go has, around and coming. she's gonna look for that fight, but he's gonna pop his ultimate, gonna bounce her up a couple of times. He is a bouncy, bouncy ball. Set a TP shield coming in. through. TP coming from the Toronto to try to back up this Margarine who is who's holding on to that petrified oh, oh, oh. block. 
the sun going on to only one in soul, but the sun is shut down, going down onto him. That's and the not Vindy good. just utterly deletes both the top laner and mid laner of EOD. But here we go, the moon go just Baron. free pushing the mid lane. He takes the tier two turret. What? Baron is. Oh! Like a prism locked and loaded on a cold claw. Timeless Tinker is the only one who can be able to save his life. He has to flash over. And SS is going to turn and try to take that Baron. They're taking it very slow. So Rock is the only one to stop this Mundo for Siege in their base down. Not really a good Okay, they're going to rotate down the dragon. But Just going to the dragon. I'm if you force really... a drag fight here and SS loses. Oh boy. Everybody's full uh, health from EOD, and they're beelining it. Yeah, this should be free for SS right here. I don't, I don't really see much of this happening. Look, I think I don't think they take it that fast. Look how low their health bar is compared to EOD. EOD just got reset. Is EOD, oh, does he go in? I don't know. I, they're taking it too fast. Damn. Now, I gotta say, I was getting ready to say right as that fight was happening, I'm a little upset that they would send someone a split push and they didn't have any vision on the top side of the jungle. And you know Zach could come pretty much damn near from the red buff. So why are you up that far by yourself? Yeah, you see two people admit, but you don't know what the other two are. Why are you up there that far by yourself? Like, that's, that's such a crucial mistake that might cost them the game, to be completely honest. I honestly think that Cassiopeia can 1v1 anybody that's not main right now. Yes. I agree. Oh my goodness. Trundle locked the hole breaker in. He's really going for split push build. Or it's gonna be a it's gonna be a 4v5 constantly. Because Trundle is just gonna split push to put so much pressure on the SS. And the best part is, is that it's working. Yeah, no one can really answer him funny they, enough, except they, Bane. They, 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 like, honestly, they're not, they're not oh, answering him this? properly. We're gonna start up a fight here in the mid lane. Bane is forced to flash. She tumbles away, but she doesn't get very far. But here comes the rest okay. of the Nice coming out from the Maokai. He knocks back. He knocks that. Oh Rock my Bane. god. It's done. Petrifying Blade. The Vic goes down. Literally sad goes golden. And meanwhile, Zen Zhao is 1v1ing that Zack to keep him preoccupied while the team lays waste in the mid lane. Sichuani is in the job. top lane, trying to take that tier two with that Baron buff, mind you. I don't think they don't base rate it fast enough. They can honestly oh, just like break the inhibitor. Off. They take the, oh, they take the inhibitor. <gasps> Are they gonna they're go for the end? They're, they're, they're going for the end. No, Sichuani's not backing. Okay, now she's not backing, but they're gonna go for the end here. They're going for it, there's no way. She's, she's channeling her back now. They're managed to get the one in next turret. They get a second next turret. The, here comes the Zack. He's gonna get grounded. Me as his so oh, This is gonna be coming out from the oh. oh. Sticks to the inhibitor, and they take game two. We're going to game three. Oh my God! I was flaming EOD two for like, yep, you might have just lost the game here, and then they just decided, nope, <laughs> screw you, DBZ. We're gonna go ahead, take a fight in the mid lane, take out three people, and just end the game oh right there. Oh my gosh! Okay, so. First of all, oh like, my God. you you predicted again. It's gonna go to game three. Your prediction's on point. And oh my gosh, the, the beginning of the game, you had mentioned popcorn, please. But guess what? We have margarine. And I think based on my my um just like knowledge uh, this of this is why I love other people playing off of my jokes. Dang. Ew, ew, oh yeah, you're just, they're like dad jokes, but I love dad jokes, so it's all good. Um, so EOD, from what I have seen, they always pick one member on their team to handle at least two to three of the enemy, like, members. So, you know, like, I think Marjorie is is their their pick to deal with at least two of them. So then the four you know, them, versus Marjorie three, was or, their one pick you know? to deal with the whole team yeah mm -hmm. he, i he's, said it in draft cassiopeia is going to be the thing that wins them the game i gotta <sighs> count how many predictions you guys have made like i feel like it's more than my hand you just, can even hand you can just, my fingers. You can just see it i could just see it i'm just like okay there's yeah. there is their there's their win con right there <sighs> yeah like, like i interrupted DBZ. you though i interrupted you i'll get oh. too hyped <laughs> oh i you're you gotta wipe your tears little dbz said what did he? He, I, you know, my thoughts are gone now. He said something at the beginning <laughs> of the game, and it was a prediction, and now I have forgotten. 
I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to give it to you, Hyper. Take it away. When my thoughts come back, maybe, then I will let you know. <laughs> well, or DBZ, what were your thoughts? Hyper is a little, little like, probably parched right now. <laughs> yeah, like, after this game, I 100% definitely want to, like, you know, just chillax, get a drink of water, because I drink all of my water during that game. But anyways, oh. like, we're just, that was insane. Just the... It started out, It's the, the game started out very, very, like, back and forth. And Trundle, Sejong on Trundle going to war on the top lane, even when he was behind because he knew once he got that Sheen plus Caulfield Warhammer, he was winning every single trade. And that's not a joke. He won every single trade after that. And just 1v1 the, the Sejuani down to the teeth. I'm like, god uh, damn, that was impressive. It's, that game was... He... He's he's a really stable champion, like in a team fight, and he's really good at split pushing. Like it's just like his kit, and I I know he's not a common pick, but he's actually quite a very powerful pick. And then, yeah, so also my has broken. I, um, yeah, I was Haru. actually whoa. My thoughts was just thinking Maokai is like the glue again. But, you uh, know, dude, Maokai is broken. Sorry. Absolutely. What were you going to say, Hyper? So, Hyper, so since we were talking say? about Trundle, since we are talking yes. about Trundle, yes. one could, and you said you like dad jokes, so I got one coming for you. Oh, uh, okay. Are you, are you watching ready. the camera? Are you watching the camera? Wait, wait, wait. Are you ready? Not yet, ready? not yet. Okay, Okay, wait. so, uh, you guys are talking about, out. okay, you talking yes. about how, like, oppressive Trundle was, right? One could say he's an absolute monster. <laughs> Right beside you? Are you just no. pulling a boss trap? <laughs> no, my wife gave it and handed it to me. Actually, that was good. Oh, GBC left. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I cannot handle these jokes. He's like, I've handled them long enough this whole mm -hmm. season. Okay, yeah. I gotta like I gotta find I gotta find some dad jokes now. Just to throw back. Yeah, that was a good one. He was a monster in that game. He was a little I if I saw him in real life and he died he you know what? He was probably next door. They they actually tear, tore down the whole house. <laughs> there was a, with an excavator. It's it's so empty the lot now. <clears throat> That's like Trundle came to my house next door and destroyed it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it was insanity. It was absolute insanity from everything from that game. It was probably one of the most hyped games once again that we've had that I've ever casted personally. Oh, it's, it's, it's like top three of hype games that like I've tested with Hyper. Oh, and just Jesus, this that oh. I, game three is gonna be an absolute banger. Do both now? I, now do, do, I, does either team keep the Maokai open? That's the question. I mean, SS now is gonna be on blue side next game. So does EOD ban the Maokai so that way SS can't have it, or do they risk it? Say you know what, screw it. We'll let the Maokai go through and maybe draft something like the same thing that we did to help us win that game. Like Ooh. it's it's gonna have to be like Blitzcrank and Maokai like bands coming up here. Well, I think less so on the Blitzcrank, but yes to Maokai. Maybe for Maokai for sure. But you know what? Like I said, game game three, we've got a cute little Poro. Or sorry, game two. It goes to EOD, whichever I think they were on the left side. Okay. So who's gonna have the King Poro? That is the ultimate. We're going to take it to break soon. But before we take it to break, any last words? Are you excited for great game three? Because I am hyped. I am hyper hyped. And DBZ freaked out. <laughs> That's my joke. Yo, her dad joke's <laughs> coming in clutch, too. I think, we go to, I think we transition to break right on that. All right. All right. We got to pose because DBZ. DBZ, you got to come back for the pose. Anyways, we'll take it back. See you soon.
Are you ready for this? Bro, man, I am. I'm ready and I'm not ready at the same time. So I am ready for game three. I have with with a game like that. You, oh, my goodness. Hold on. Give me a second. Yo, why do I hear myself echoing? That's kind of weird. Is it because I'm listening to... Oh. Hold on. Interesting. All right. Oh, well, um... anyway, bands have finally started. So far, we got the same bands coming in for both teams. Now it depends. What's going to happen here? I think it's coming from Redacted. Hey, yeah, Trod, it is. what are you doing, man? Yeah, I can hear you, you like what you got us echoing for. Yeah, it's like it's like it's go. <laughs> go stream the Maokai band. Okay, that that, cha that changes everything. The Maokai band Maokai finally band. coming in. Finally, but and the interlock trundle SS does. Okay, oh, SS SS says oh. we could play a better trundle. I love it. Um, what I do want to ask you, uh, freak, uh, mm -hmm. since I'm thinking about it right now. Hold on, I gotta. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, I'm getting flamed because I can't uh, spell. Oh my goodness, that's how we answer an Orn. That's how we answer. We lock in Orn. Orn was not banned, so in this case, it would be just the best, wisest idea to pick him. Honestly, yes, I was gonna say, you'd be trolling with massive brain locking in Orn. I love it. Unless they do some goofy stuff like they did game uh, game two and they put Orn support. Oh god. That was that was very shocking and stuff, and like that's one of the things like that was nice about uh, like us like getting the draft afterwards so that we could tell Twitch chat like this might look like completely jacked, but it'll make sense eventually. The karma, okay, they're going in with the karma. Hmm, very interesting. Hmm. Makes you wonder what ADC they're gonna pair with that. The most typical pairing with karma is karma Ezreal, karma Caitlyn. I was gonna say Caitlyn. I was mm -hmm. thinking maybe a Caitlyn. Um, if they're gonna go for that Orn, I think a Caitlyn would be really good uh, with that setup because you have uh, Caitlyn on the back end able to just lay down, um, just lay down, you know, the ultimate range, the most right. range basic attack, by the way, just basic auto attack out of all the ADC 675. I looked it up. <laughs> um, Whoa, Mordekaiser as the You know what? SS horn? with okay. these funky ass flex picks. Ah, uh, it's Mordekaiser jungle, Trundle, Trundle top lane. I, e uh, since they're doing some funky drafts, Mordekaiser jungle, Trundle support. <laughs> yeah, Trundle support I, uh, with the Sivir wouldn't be too bad, anyways. So, what goes on here? The response. That's right, Kogma's open. This would be the time they to whip it out. It's game three. You, it, it's. It's, 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 okay, you know what? Gonna... That's actually probably the best pick when you got two beef tanks like that and you're staring down. It's like, how do I want to shred through that armor this like yep. quickly? You lock in Kogma. And if you do die, guess what? You can just, you know, suicide bomb over into the rest of the team. Oh, yeah. I like the. I like. Yeah. yeah get rid of so this is, this get rid is a of huge pick. Get, get rid of the Blitzcrank. You don't want anyone hooking, hooking that Kogma <sighs> and Karma. Okay, nice. I'm, I'm excited because I got one shot is basically a Kogma one trick. So this coming in, as especially like what is the final game of uh, this uh, split so far before we head into playoffs. I like the Soraka ban, you know, keep that healing away. And I, I, I still fully would rather have Lulu on the enemy team rather than Soraka. Or, well, well, actually pause. Yumi is still open. Yep. Okay. Might get the they, do, Yumi. they do still have Yumi open. They EOD could lock in Yumi right now because Yumi, uh, Yumi Kogma isn't actually terrible. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Oh, Look, they could um, also steal it and make Karma go mid, which is entirely possible. I used to do. I don't think they're gonna. Mid. I don't think they're gonna stick um, so Margarine on the Karma. I don't think so either. They still have. They're still in Anivia up and Yorick. Where's this Orn going? Is that an Orn jungle? Is Timeless Tinkerer going to take Orn into the jungle right now? There's no way. Unironically, Anivia is actually a huge brain pick for EOD. Oh, uh, to finish out the round, round off the copy. Yeah, I agree. Oh, oh they're going to go okay. for a Thresh. They're going to hover the Thresh, though. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they just slipped to the Yumi and still were locking the Thresh here. Yeah. Um, they locking the Thresh. Okay. You know what? Yes. Not going to lie. I think a Diana here would be kind of disgusting. Uh, yeah, Diana would be kind of cool. 
I don't think oh, they need a, they need some AD. They need some AD. Yeah. They really right now, you only really have Sivir and Chwom. If it's the if this is what I'm Stop. thinking. Stop. What is this draft? That is a Trundle support. There's who's the mid laner? Is it Mordekaiser? It would have to be. No freaking way they locked. The is it going to be Trundle? It's going to be Trundle top, Scarter jungle, Morty, Mordekaiser mid, mid. Sivir Thrish bot lane. Oh, Are you kidding okay. me? Yo. What, yo. what is it with these drafts yo. coming out from SS? I yo, love them. Oh, I love it. Dude, these unconventional picks, these off meta picks, just making these team comps so goofy. And they work too. Yeah, they, they, they definitely work. They like, are Rocker working. That's the crazy game. part. Vein? They're going to. That's a, that's a Vein top lane. Or in mid, you think? I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what they're drafting. Game one made sense. And then they decided to kind of throw it out of the window. Game one made absolute sense. What is going on? Oh my god. I... Alright, I just... Okay, Haru. <laughs> this is another game of what as of we don't know going where what is going where um i think oh this time i think before gosh. you get into it haru i think this time okay. around uh, for our producer, what are your predictions Let, let's on. put it out before we get there Wait. for our producer's sake and for uh everyone on the look watching at twitch uh we should make another draft and as soon as they lock in their champions, like another draft lull, and then as soon as they lock in their champions, we, you know, do the the draft page again so that we can see th what it looks like before we get in-game. I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah. I, I think that would be fun. That would be a fun thing to do. Uh, Maybe for next time? I... So, basically, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got you. So basically what we're looking at now is we're looking at potentially, and this I'm just spitballing the comp here. It could be maybe York top, Orange Jungle, Vayne mid, Kogma, Karma, and the bot lane. On the other side, again, just spitballing, maybe Trundle top, Skarner Jungle, Mordekaiser mid, Sivir Thresh bot lane. I... I... Do not know what could potentially be the idea here. I, I this is definitely something that's got to wait till we're in client to see like what's going on. But this is absolutely disgusting. Just like what are we even looking at right now? You I know just... what? To go off your predictions, I actually like can analyze and see and like I think you're gonna be right about, about this. I really um, think your predictions will be right. Do not um, give it away. Do not give it away. Not going to. No, no, no. Don't give it away. Don't give it away. Not going to. Not going to. Don't give it away. Not yet. Um, after, after we get everything pulled up, redacted, just go ahead and stream that link. Okay. 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 Oh, I, I'm, a, I'm a dumbass. Okay. We're going to make a new one. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited! I was uh, super hyped. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, so this one... Okay. What What am I supposed to see? Hold okay. on. Okay. That's but yours, homie. For, for, for a, a individual that's supposed to hyper up everybody, I am getting impatient. Mm -hmm. Okay, is, you ready, Freak? I am ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Look at these pants. All right, dude, you're you're gonna be SS. So, okay, let's just do mock pants first. Four, yeah. Okay. I'm not ready. Hold on. Just okay. do it afterwards. Just do it afterwards. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'll do it after. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'll just do like just do like really quick bands. Do Don't after. even look for who they banned. And we're not gonna lock that one in. Just make sure you don't ban the ones that they actually locked. Yeah, yeah I know. Here is the first pick. <laughs> okay. That's the first okay. pick. Nice. Nice. 
Yeah. That was one of the picks. Yeah. I'm just as shocked. It gets worse, though. Oh my gosh. Where it's we? Skarner mid! Oh my! Oh I don't my! Know. Okay, I didn't see that. I didn't even see that coming. I I thought he might have been like the jungle for sure. I thought they were trolling too. But you know what? He could not. He wouldn't. I have seen like this thing where a lot of people will pick top laners to be mid laners because they want the sustainability with the the like being a top lane pick you're gonna be sustainable in the mid lane if you can take it and then you go to have your other top lane who's sustainable and then your jungle and then they team up on like this like squishy anyone who's squishy just three of them dog pile done hey. for that's i that's maybe s is like and then they got the thresh who just hooks in but then on the other side of it other side of it. Sorry, sorry. I'm just so flabbergasted that it's Skarner mid. How are you gonna do Skarner mid into a vein? I mean, I guess with maybe the jungle help that'll be like. I just, oh my god. Like, oh I, well, I just you know can't what? It. It's. I got. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that your mind is blown. I gotta throw some paper. Yeah. This is Kentucky. This is literally Hyper and DVZ's mind right now, guys. All these little pieces of paper in pieces. The two teams have exploded our casters' <laughs> minds. So, <laughs> so when, we, I gotta call 911. One sec. So, hello? Hello, 911. Is... <laughs> we, need, we need some help. My 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 casters are like they're they're noodles right now. Broken. Anyways, predictions. What are both your predictions? If so, if you have some mind left <laughs> to predict. So okay, freak. I don't know if don't you know. agree with me on this one, but what I'm seeing is SS essentially went for the same draft that they drafted game one. Right. right, the just the Longhorns protecting the Sivir. Mm -hmm. um, EOD played it game one. They underestimated it, and now they have an answer. They have two beef tanks of their own, probably the beefiest out of all one, two, three, four, five, six tanks in the game at the moment. There's six of them. Orn and Yorick are probably the beefiest. Yeah. And they have the two ADCs that shred tanks faster than all the ADCs yeah. out there. Vayne and Kog'Maw pump out so much true damage, oh, on hit yeah. damage, and they do it <laughs> so fast. And not only do we have that, we have Karma just <laughs> poking left and right, roots, speed ups, you name it. And what does SS have? They have the same draft they have game one. Game EOD one. have played it. They know how to play it now. And now they have an answer for it. Game <laughs> three is going to be a nail biter. But if EOD exciting. can play this correctly. They take this win. They take it. They take it. If they can uh. play it correctly. And they got to play on the bot side. They have to play through the bot side of the map. They got to leave Yorick alone for a little bit. Fangal is going to bully the hell out of Shangjong. But as we know, that man doesn't... He just, he just fights. He fights. He just fights. So I don't know <laughs> what the top lane is going to look like. Just... <laughs> but, but EOD's <laughs> jungler, Timeless Tinker, is going to have to play the bot side of the map very heavy here because he's going to have to accelerate the Vayne and the Kog'Maw somehow. Mm -hmm. Because so, if he so... can't get one of them, just one, he just needs one. I'm he just needs crisis. one to get ahead at the moment. And I think the easier target is Kog'Maw because he builds Gensu's first. Yeah. I'm having a crisis. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm, with, I'm with you on every point, Hyper. It, the whole thing's going to come down to execution. But in terms of me predicting who's going to win, I don't know. I know it's our, it's like kind of our job to kind of like be like, yeah, you know, we, we pick out the easy points here, like here and there, you know, here's who's going to win. 
but just, I just, yeah, but I need a moment to breathe. Hey, do you well, all need a moment yeah. to breathe? You know I what? need a moment to what, breathe. You know, you know what we're going to do? We're going to cut it to break pretty soon here so you guys have a bit of time to breathe. Make sure you meditate very, even get your apps out and meditate to your apps or get some water. You both are going to cast one of the most exciting draft games as of like today. So anyways, we'll bring it back. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned. Welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait, bang, God. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up, come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first 20 yeah, minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would have expected there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys. because they're all, Actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards on this side and there's a 3 on the other side but i can't clutch it and i can't clutch it but boxer pro in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the q before he's last dies and chicken fried rice to an escape with good death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal up and the call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage to triple back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial. Four men are sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. And it's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it. And to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the game, and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. To Summoner's Rift. Welcome, Welcome to game, to game three. three! And we have a spicy level one coming in right oh. off the bat. We have yeah, a five minute luckily, luckily, we are gonna have that ward Ooh. and a nice, nice mantra Q coming out from Whoa. the karma. Oh. That ward there in the river is exactly what saved them, but it's pretty obvious. Like, yep, yeah, we knew. They will never expect the solo Q invade coming the normal, in from Ultra. The normal solo Q invaded that. I love it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, my God. I love... I love the sportsmanship, too. I absolutely love it. Just, this game, Bye. I just... You know, we said during the break that we would kind of take a moment to like try to figure out what in the friggity fruit was going on, but I still cannot comprehend the fact of this Skarner mid. Like, Vayne is gonna just like use and abuse this kid. Oh, or yeah. Not. Or uh, Vayne is just gonna get stunned up like that <laughs> for okay. free. I wonder if, uh, I don't really see them on the blue buff. Interesting. And Orn starting up on the red side. Yeah. He has unsealed spellbook. What? I didn't see that. Going on, it's like what a, what a game. Scarlet with the Predator, as expected, to be able to kind of just beeline it right for that backline whenever he has his ultimate. And Vayne is just going to abuse him with this range advantage. This yeah, thing is going to go horribly for a little while. Yeah, one shot and Marjoram both opting for Flash Ghost here. Really smart. Um, Ghost Flash, actually, uh, the more common rune setup for Kogma, uh, just so he can run down uh, who he's trading with. And these top laners doing a really good job. Feng out, obviously loving these extended trades. Oh, He's got that passive oh. going. Really nice isolation Q right there. Bringing down the hammer. I am honestly not surprised. Mundo, Mundo, Mordekaiser, the other M champion in the top lane. With that whole little passive thing that I'm blinking on the name of at the moment. He will always be in these extended trades. Just that extra Yes. Once. 
keep one step because Darkness Rise is going to eat through Yorick in these early levels. But I got to give it to Shenzhong. This man has put Mordekaiser's health bar at the exact same percentage as his own. So really good trading from Shenzhong. But we have a gate coming out from Unwanted Soul. That one shot is going to get slowed up by that Glacial. Brock coming out. Pillar is going to be able to slow them up, but not too much. Coastal on one shot. Get out of there. Ghost is the only thing that was burned. And Lexicon had to pop his heel there. Oh, Interesting. In the top lane coming through oh, from those little God. gremlins. Ah, dude. And that's why Yorick is a really obnoxious champion in IMO. Yeah, if he can if he can land that E, not only does it slow that morning mist, not only does it slow, like, it's like oppressive, but like his little dudes come out of the ground and just start just beating on you. <laughs> It's actually really dumb how much damage your Q does later in the game. It, it yeah. just feels like it just like absolutely annihilates you. But that, he's not at that point just yet. But he has a CS lead as expected. It looked dire for uh for Sage Young there at first, and Karma's just going forward and going for the roof. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. And she's just I mean, I guess why not? You're you got the little speed up, you know. He could oh, probably just... he's gonna lose the scuttle here. That's no, so sad. No, timeless tinkerer. Oh no, no, that's smite. really unfortunate. He had to smite the Gromp. That's why. Oh, that's so unlucky. Wait, it probably should have waited the extra few seconds for the smite. But I mean, you also lose the momentum of clearing the jungle. But I also did not realize that homeboy full cleared. So good for him. Is Orn, yeah, I mean, is Orn I jungle the tech? Orn, I think Orn needs to full clear uh, so that he can uh, call the Forge God for a gank setup, um, mm -hmm. whereas Trundle can just, you know, level 3 gank uh, all day. Oh god, the CS gap in the mid lane is exactly what I expected. Yeah, she's just gonna punish him. And the CS gap in the bot lane, exactly what I expected. I have played Kog'Maw into a Sivir, and man, it's oppressive. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Oh, but with that being said, they're always gonna be oh. shoved under your tower because you can't really contest the wave that much. And it makes ganking them so easy if you're the, uh, if you're the EOD jungler. There's a lot of damage coming in from the mini wave, and Vayne just ultimately loses that trade. Yeah, she should have just oh, backed oh. out. She went for that condemned. Oh, really good uh, last rights there from Sanchong. Gonna lock him in that cage, and his little dude's just going to work. God, I love Yorick. I have a friend who pretty much one tricks Yorick every now and then. Uh, he, it's just, I just see the amount of damage he's doing to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. What's very funny is that Yorick, Kog'Maw, and Bane, these are the exact same three skins that I play when I play these champs. <laughs> nice, <man. I> <laughs> like the exact same ones. Right, Bane taking over that level 6 first here. Ooh, level Coastal going for a root. Good. That was a good special. Got it too. Spell Shield was, gonna, uh, was the only thing that's going to keep her alive right there. Ooh, okay. Bellows about to try to negate the hook even though it went wide. But yeah, now we got a humble. cheeky nonsense here in the river with Trundle coming from the back. Actually, it's a four-man looking like it's, it's about to happen. It's a four-man cheeky thing going to the bot lane. What do you mean, just the Trundle? <laughs> I just, I, he was on top of the Thresh and then like they started melding apart. I'm like, oh, that's three people. Ooh, wee, but bot lane's gonna go ahead and reset with people opens up the dragon oh, there. Oh, looks for... like SS is gonna mm -hmm. take this Drake right off spot, too. Yeah, go, uh, good on you, SS. Go for that dragon. EOD on the other hand, uh, they're they're doing well. They're up one K gold. Well, the CS difference in the mid lane is huge, and it's twenty CS in the top lane. But that yeah, dragon up to the absolutely massive. Senjong is just landing morning mist after morning mist, and it's so oppressive, man. Oh, it's so oppressive. Fang out just like. He can't do nothing but like get hit by it. And what's unfortunate is that it's not that he's not sidestepping it. It's, it's Senjong is throwing it exactly when he's about to auto. So he gets locked in that Welcome animation back. and then the little dudes just go to work. And yeah. that one's glitching out. You see that? He's mm -hmm. freaking out, man. He's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. The early game is going exactly how I was uh, imagining it. Oh, no. EOD has to wait until Timeless Tinker hits 6 so he can go in for his ganks uh, because Orn before that isn't really going to do much. No, not really. So when Call of the Forge God comes in, that instantly kind of blows in the, the, the team fighting of uh, EOD wide open. They're able to kind of yeah. just do whatever.
And, and you know, SS, very smart taking that first Drake uh, mm -hmm. while Horn is still level 5 because as soon as he takes over to level 6, that first Drake becomes instantly harder to take if you're SS. Did get this after Krugs? Yeah, he's gonna hit 6 very shortly here in a second. Very close. Oh, he's gonna lock him right in the cage, but Mordekaiser makes the horrible mistake of bringing the Yorick in closer. Uh, had to pop that shield so that last right didn't do, enough, uh, do a lot of damage. Alright, and then Yorick has the ultimate. You know what Here that comes means. the maiden! Weirdly enough, I have some friends that, uh, once again, my friend who won tricks, he calls the maiden baby mama. I don't know why, but he does. Dude, as soon as Elden Ring came out, so many maidenless jokes. I believe it. And, and you know what's funny? I got, I, uh, I was playing top lane for a little bit when Elden Ring came out. Right. And I was playing Yorick, because I like Yorick. And it was around the time he got buffed where Maiden was doing more damage. And uh, I, I had a, was rolling over the guy I was landing against. And he all chats and he says, Why can't you fight me Maidenless like a real man? <laughs> oh, man I, love, I love the Elden Ring era of the internet. So many good jokes. I was like, that was pretty good. Instead of saying no bitches, it was just Maidenless and it was so funny. It was so it. good. Timeless Tinkerer. He's got level 6 now. Yo, they see him though, and Skarner can kind of just walk in there and ruin his day a little bit. Xinjiang has got that sheen too, and they're and gonna take him right to the death realm. And the Maiden pops in the death realm, but she's not gonna be able to come out once she- Oh, she does! First blood over to Mordekaiser though! Yeah, I was, uh, kinda saw that one coming after a little bit. So very as unlucky. As soon as he brought him in, I was- it was, and he like took him straight to the death realm. I was like, oh no, I don't think Yorick has enough sta uh, enough tank resistance to like survive that right now. Oh, oh really oh, good hook on the shred at first. He dives in, he pops the cage. Close like gets a little bit of a speed up, but the ignite is ticking down. Scarter turns his attention to the right. Fogma suppresses him, drags him over to the Sivir. The Sivir claims one. She's looking for Coleslaw. She wants that Coleslaw with her ribs because she's taking down the Fogma. She gets the double kill. Oh and my goodness. SS is on the board. 3-0 and oh in the first. In the, in the first few seconds of that first blood was claimed, they get two more. Yeah, and the sad part is they're just gonna rip open this herald, and honestly, I think, oh god, what the damage. I think they honestly just commit for the tower here. Yeah. Oh, uh, here comes Tim. He's able to call the four god okay. right onto that struggle, knocks him up, the billow's breath, that brittle proc going in. But that tower still got a lot of armor coming from those plates. He's gonna get that hook up from the pillar. Unwanted soul has to flash away and literally sad as well. They try to flame away, but the pillar's breath is providing enough unstoppable force. One shot's trying to get enraged, but he just can't do it. Timeless take oh, the scoping unstoppable, but so is Lexicon. She gets enough mana back. She got the blue buff, but one shot runs down the thresh. They look for the Sivir in the mid lane. Marjorie is trading really heavy with that Skarner. In the top lane, Shenjong is trading really heavy with that Mordekaiser. It is fights all over the map today on the game fighting. three in the rift. The fight he gave my man the chance to breathe. Good God, that was a really long fight. So Sivir obviously comes in, gets two kills in the, uh, after that fight, after that first level in the top lane. Bane is just going hard into this dude right now. He just honestly might kill him here. He just respects him a little more. Anyways. Oh no, he's predatoring at her. Here's the predator proc, the root, the suppress, right into <laughs> literally sad. Gets the stun, gets the hook, she tumbles away with the ultimate. They can't see her. No. She gets a little no. she can no. the no. hook goes wide. And Coleslaw is not in does not have the movement speed to support her just yet. Uh, and Bane almost gets out of that with one in the bag. That was so close, and this should be another drink going over to SS. I am so sad. Come on, EU dear. What the toy breaker? You guys have to win this game. But they're down to about no, just under 2k. Just under 2k. But Shenjong. Oh, my, oh, I just saw what Mordekaiser has in his inventory. It wouldn't be a DBZ hypercast if one of the people wasn't taking Magi's.
We, um, okay, so for context for all of you who don't know, every time me and Hyper cast together, somebody, either the mid laner or the AP top laner or even the AP jungler, always builds a dark seal in our game and then goes to Medjai's eyes and always ends up stacking it. So that's kind of our thing right now. So if that's the case, EOD might be doomed. It's like the one person you don't want to get on. Yeah, I think if he is the realm of death, he kind of just beats him again. Or yeah. he just beats all. But he's, he's just taking so much damage. I wonder if he stacked W. He did not. I would Why open. does Bean have a Tiamat? What are you building right now? Because, though? dude. That's what you do is to, uh, top lane Bane. Oh, I didn't know that. I haven't seen top lane Bane in like Yeah, you do. You rush, you rush Ravenous. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Timeless Tinkerer going to try to invade on the jungle, but in the mid lane, Marjorie is going to get suppressed, and she's going to be able to maybe get stunned. She does get stunned. It's a 3v2. Plus plus here, but he does not provide enough shield and movement speed for Marjorie. Oh she's going to be able to get right up here. Oh, she yes. and she does play one. Close lock gets stunned. She gets hooked. She gets played back. Sivir does able to close right on the edge of that boomerang. She pops the spell shield and call the forge god does not knock her up. But they trade one oh, for dead. one in the death realm. The top laners are going at it. Shen Jung does able to keep him locked in there for a little bit. He, maybe he can stand it out for a little bit. He does. He gets under turret, but he still gets taken out by the passive death ring of the Mordekaiser. He also dies with flash up again, so not entirely unfortunate. I could have fla probably flashed out and I lived. I flash because I know I'm dead there. I guess. I don't know. I mean, a second time he does with flash, but it's okay. I'm... I just... Good God. Alright, so they're losing all over the map now, uh, unfortunately for EOD. This is the, what, the... They bring it back. They can bring it back. They have the ability to. Guess, guess who Yogi's carry is. I got one shot naturally on the Kogma. He finishes Quincy. No! Margarine! Oh. EOD's carry is Margarine! And he is on the one carry champion that shreds through their entire team. Okay, and I, okay. And okay. I called it wrong. He's actually building Titanic Hydra, which is a huge oh, brain that's play. Absurd. It's a huge brain play. Okay, okay, I like it. I like it. Then I, 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 I'm, I, I, I'm English, English. I'm just so flat. Just vain solo lane builds are so weird. It's, it's, they're one thing and then they're another later, and it's just like, what do you even build anymore on that champion? Titanic Hydra yeah, is fun. so huge. It is gonna be so good. And then I really hope she goes Bork next. Um, yeah, I would assume so. I mean, delay the mythic as long as she can, and then eventually get the Kraken Slayer, which I, I assume. I would, would I would honestly, here. honestly, you do Titanic, Bork, Gensu's, then Kraken. I was like processing it in my head, but yeah, you're right. I think that'd be the way to do it. I think that would be the way to do it. Um, looks like one shot is not going to be going Bork here. He's going to go Gensu's into PD, actually. Yeah. Interesting no. why he's not going to go for Bork uh, second item. I don't know why. I would definitely go Bork second item. I mean, I mean, he probably will do it third item. <clears throat> but um, it's just I'm 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 trying to figure out the thought process there. Um, but that's just, oh that's my just, god, no. Venga oh, brings yeah, York right into the death realm with that hook. And he brings the hammer down. Last Rite's giving him a little bit of extra health. He dodges that isolation cue. He gets the blast card over the wall. He does not get the hook. The little okay. dudes are doing a lot of work, but the shield is able to heal him up just enough and protect him long enough. The flash coming out from Sanjong. Here comes the maiden. Here comes the little dudes. He ducks he the oh. on the end. The top laners trade each other's life for one another. And now Sanjong can 1v1 the Mordekaiser and get a kill in the end. Got it. Oh. He the QSS text at the end of that, so that way Mordekaiser can't just solo ult him anymore. Now Mordekaiser's like, well, who do I ult? Well, it'll be harder to ult Bane because she can just kite you up in there. What are you doing? Look at those Thresh? grabs, but like, here comes the early shot. He tries to flay him back into his team. Here comes the lantern. The flash from Timeless Tinker are very smart, but that hook goes wide. Dragon in 20 seconds, and SS have control of this jungle. Yeah, and this is soul point here for SS if they end up getting this. The TP in from the Mordekaiser. It's just like, guys, you gotta have to fight for this. You can't give it up. Oh my god. That was a lot of damage. Yeah, the hammer from the Mordekaiser right there. Drake is now entering into the pit. But all five members, all ten members on this rift are here to fight for it. 
EOD pop on the whole the forge god. Here it comes. It knocks up two. And they start to fight. They manage to get a hook right on a coleslaw. The play coming in. But here comes a knockup from the orn. He's going unstoppable. Billow's breath is able to do not enough, but he goes down. Time to see oh, Somebody gets suppressed and they're going down. Margarine is out of the fight. And it is a two for nothing in favor of SS. Saw point. Dragon reset. And EOD have to run with the tail between their legs. Oh no, the carries just don't do any damage yet, and that's so sad. Not yet, not yet. Oh. If it can stall, I'm gonna, I'm calling it now. If if EOD can stall for 25 minutes, they swing. Yeah, I agree with you. They have 25 they have minutes. To turtle. At this point, you're down a 5k gold. Objective values are coming up. You just have to relax. You gotta take the time, farm up, get those items. They have to hit those critical yeah, item fun. points. Kogma yeah. going for his PD next. He needs that. And then I don't know. He's not he's... going. What is he building? Oh, oh he's going PD. for. Um, he's going for the. Uh, we're not hurricane. You're not. It's okay. Yeah, you're right. That's actually right. okay. Yeah, that's better than PD. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, understand why I was so confused because it was the wrong item. <laughs> 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 All right, so Runan's is the second item. Vayne, I don't know what she's doing for a second oh, item Oh, right actually, now. yo, no, this is who you're going to send into the Mordekaiser. You send the Vayne with the Titanic, because she does that right there. She just mm -hmm. pokes his ass out like that. Just like okay. that. And then here Karma comes Coleslaw. Oh, the Kadam, really good coming out from the Vayne. Margarine Ooh. doing a lot of damage There's a with lot of support that coming. silver bullet combination. Timely Stinker is here now, but so is the Skarner. The Bane goes into the death round. Time to take the ring. Kozar are here to help her prevent. On the marker and is so huge. She comes out of that alive. But oh, double oh, order comes oh. down in the end. The root coming out of the Skarner. The flash coming out of her margin. The tumbling oh, the trying to get him alive. And oh, the Trumno manages to take her. The, sc the stun coming out of time. The Stinkerer. He suppresses the coleslaw. The coleslaw comes out. She is a side of... She is a side you pair with ribs. But not a pair you... There with the ram because they're getting stunned. The health bars are going long. One shot is coming in to help protect his team. He's I able to take it. Up them. Double kill for the Kogma. But the fight is not over just yet. Oh my god, it's the ball lanes versus the ball lanes. Who's is better? Well, definitely statistically Sifter should be stronger, but oh my goodness. One shot oh. does from the double buff. He is shredding through that. That thrust so fast. The one shot is so huge. His health bar, his damage, they have it. Here comes the reign of EOD. Okay, the, those items are coming in clutch. That Renan's was huge for that fight with Kongo over the wall, just hitting the two tanks. Oh my god, and they're gonna get this objective bounty off this tower, so that's good. Boom, objective bounties are now gone. The gold lead has shrank to 2k. Oh, this game is nuts. This game is nuts. Cogma's gonna back after all of those kills. I think one of them was a shutdown. They just... Woo! What's the next item, Cogma? What you doing? What you doing? Bork here? Oh, he's... Okay. I guess he's going for the boost, but they're gonna call for a bear in here. Oh, honestly, do it. Do it. Really good, really... Really, really good play mm -hmm. from SS. While we have time to breathe, more specifically, while I have time to breathe, go ahead, yeah. go ahead and break that down for me, big man. Good lord, it looked actually doomed. I mean, Bane one v one the Mordekaiser came out of the ultimate, kills him, and we're like, all right, realistically they should back off, but Bane's super low, when she ends up dying from the flash from the uh, from the trundle. Now Sage's in a really bad spot. He doesn't have flash. Yeah, but he puts Never mind. that age in the very beautiful spot the lantern locking them both up i love it just a thresh goes inside of the cage and he says i need a friend because i'm alone in here why don't you come with me Skarner? <laughs> the absolute trust for eod to pick kogma knowing that like i got one shot can carry on this champion and oh. clearly that he pretty much they 2v4 at the, the end of that last fight and Bane is in a Marjorie in a really spot. bad spot. She does catch that hook, she does catch that play, she does catch that suppress. And like I said, they need to change their name. SS is not fitting enough. They need to be renamed to CC Crowd Control because it is ridiculous. Yeah, and you have Dragon coming up in less than a minute, and this is the Infernal Soul. Yeah, you and that not is want... not the champion you want getting uh -oh. kicked right now. Oh, oh really no, nice no, hook, no, literally no. sad, just laying him down right now. And like, you know, like I find it funny. 
with his hooks. They're either perfect or they're out and left field. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're so in between. They're super wide or they're right on the mark. There's no way they're giving this up, right? They're not even really positioning in a way to go. They don't have mid pro, which is true. They, they really have to get in. that mid pro. They gotta get that midway pushed in before they even think about they're not going in. Go and they, whoa, we do have the first ornament coming in. Orn. Secure. Oh, he doesn't have an ornament. I looked at them. Oh, he calls in Call of the Forge God, but they're all coming behind him. He's going to push into the death realm. The Call of the Forge God is not going to be able to do enough. Bane on the back line. He's shredding through the Fist 2, but two members of EOD go down. Marjorie tried to pick up one. They pick up Scarter with, the, with that Kogma death passive. Oh my goodness. SS is looking for the end. The Yorick and Coleslaw does not go well if you don't have a main course. Oh man, this might be actually be the end of the game this here. Is game. This is game. This has got to be game. If they don't end this game, they will not win later. Yeah, oh, all right. Yep. Going going to defend this. Sword. Her mantra cues are going to be the only thing to save the base. Here comes here come the 1v9. Here comes Orn. They are able to stop the siege on the Nexus. Oh, they are shooting oh, 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 They managed to take out one. Mordekaiser goes down. To take out two. Kogma gets a double kill. They're looking for a little bit more. Literally, Slad has to run away from the enemy team. He lands the hook, gets that glacial. He gets the Kogma. The shielding from the Coleslaw is just so massive right now. Shirelia's battle song was popped and they're looking for the dragon. Margarine finds the jungler. Unwanted Soul has to pop that pillar just to get away from her. They take the Drake. They stop the Nexus push. And there's Yorick making sure they don't go for a second in him. EOD clinging for dear life in game three. Their Nexus wide open. Kogma unleashed. He has no mythic and he's still doing a billion damage to all of them. I don't even know what he's building now. Probably finally the pork. Kogma's one of those teams where you don't need to build your mythic. You don't have first. to build your mythic. You don't need it. You really don't. <laughs> oh, this game is nuts. Uh, this, I love this, this game so much, dude! This I is what if... we were hoping for for game three. Just, to, just all, all, do you all have, um, do like, you have Witch open by chance? I do have Twitch open. Yes, I do. You have it. Are you? Are they going nuts too? Uh, I see some. I see some cog champs. I see this game is crazy. Crazy defense. Just... Chat. I need. I need. I need some pog for the cog in the chat, please. <laughs> this man is single-handedly saving the game, and Margarine is single-handedly single-handed. Handily. I can't words right now because she is handling that Mordekaiser with absolute perfection. I just cannot believe it. It's, it's insane. It's insanity. And like we're getting a fight right here. A three-man knockup from Timeless Inqueror. Guys, come on. I gotta breathe. Oh, well, they're going. Okay, here comes the call. The Forge God is going to knock up that trundle. Got to be really good. Pillar coming out of Timeless Tinkerer. He's going to be isolated. Four members on top of him, but he's going to charge right back into the safety arms of his team. Top laners are in the top lane. 1v1ing, and the Maiden is out. Karma has a QSS. She's not really going to be, you know, halted really by the don't need it. You know, if I'm Yorick, I send Maiden in the bot lane and just leave her there. Oh my goodness. Oh, really good hook coming out from TP. literally sad. The play right into Unwanted Soul. The TP coming out. Bang out is going to be able to do a lot of damage. They focus their attention on a, I got oh, one shot. No, but to, him. to the wall. Shut down for the vein. She walks down literally sad. He has to go golden. But when you go golden in League, you go to the gray screen because he is alive no more. Your kicks him up. Mudrin and Sivir trade one for one in the mid lane. EOD. <laughs> is laying down the defensive line. They have drawn a line in the sand and said, if you cannot cross. Gold lead be damned. Jesus Christ, they're, who cares if they're down 3k gold? They're still able to take these fights and make them very competitive. Now, once again, I'm gonna flame the lack of QSS when you have a Skarner and a Mordekaiser in these beats. So I really feel like Kogma especially should go for the QSS. He's got flashed on twice now by Skarner and Alton. 
but he lived this time. The first time he died, but like still, please get the QSS so you can live. He should have done Ghost Cleanse, honestly. Mm, <laughs> he should have just gone Ghost Cleanse. I don't know when their inhibitor is coming up, but it should be coming up in the next couple of minutes, like the next like minute here or so. Just this game is just so out of out of control. Like like both teams are fighting for their lives, and the fact that like EOD is able to pull off this defense that they are doing mind blowing. Baron is being set up. Going for the Baron. I don't think they're going to be able to sneak this one. Focus. EOD senses it this time. Oh yeah. They got four members here ready for the contest. Coleslaw is able to get a ward. They know it's getting taken. Called for God comes in, and he doesn't able to steal it with that. Hundo oh, was able to secure it. Shreloy's battle song, we're going in. It's time to fight. Their base is they open. Don't close the distance well enough. Supers are in their base. Vayne channels okay. the back, and SS take their reset. Drake, one minute. This is the fight. This is the fight to end the game. Inhibitor has respawned. I'm gonna make Send a the hot maiden. take. Shenzhong, just put the Maiden in the bot lane. Just put her in the bot lane and go to the Drake. 5v5, let the Maiden do her job. My hot take for this next potential fight. I think EOD wins this fight if Kogma doesn't get caught. He has no flash, nice to keep that in mind. He finally has the QSS, thank you. Okay. We have Runons on two ADCs. We have Gensus on two ADCs. This is gonna be the fight I'm so to end this. game three. And I ago. got chills, ladies and gentlemen. I got absolute chills. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be close. Oh, okay. literally lands that hook. Freak. New York, so that's okay. Freak, are you ready for this? Oh, this is Drake. gonna be hype. Drake, two seconds. EOD looking for their way into the river. The ornaments are coming in. He's got the Forge Fire Crest. The decide on the Yorick. And oh, Australia's oh, Battle Song is the only one that hasn't got it. They start up the Drake. They're posturing very heavy. She does give him a little mantra shield. Here comes the hook. It doesn't land. It hits a little dude. Mordekaiser keeps aggroing that dragon. It looks like he's going to turn their attention a little bit. Pillar coming on to them in the river. They claim the river. It is theirs. Shang Zhang gets taken low, but he goes Here golden. Comes the spinner. Fresh gets taken out. What shot got him? But on the back line, now the Trundle just <laughs> eliminates the <laughs> The ace them! Triple kill to the Sivir! That's game! Oh, no, it was so chaotic. I don't know what happened in terms of the, of the focus. I don't know, like, how the hell what happened to, to, to Kogma in that fight. I just looked and he was gone. I thought that fight was going to go heavily in the POD. I'm watching it back. I'm watching it back. I'm watching it back. That's going to be the end of the game. This is game three, SS takes the series two to one at the, off the back of that last fight. What an insane final game to end the night. Jeez. <sighs> okay, so you're you're looking back, right? Listen, I yeah. don't know like, what happened. Like Kogma, a oh, oh, the thresh. I know what happened. I know what happened. Okay, know what happened. happened. Sivir, Kraken Slayer, i.e. Lord Doms. Do you want to know where EOD was? Bunched up. They were like two inches from each other. Okay. All right. Yep, that makes Reason sense. number one, because Kogma's health bar at this point, because of mm -hmm. that, um, fifty percent. <laughs> okay. Um. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, he peels off, and Trundle doesn't even care about the tanks, because Kogma bunches off into the uh, drag pit, Trundle attaches to him, and you want to know the other funny thing? Skarner on the flank saw that. glues, dicks, vein, suppresses him, and guess who he got? And guess what? Lexicon in the back, nobody's touching Sivir. Lexicon is in the back, hands free, right click to victory, and it's, it's over at that point. Yeah, I mean, yep. Good. There goes Kogma. Vayne had a flash back over into the team, and nobody's hitting Lexicon. Full health. And just simmer autoing. 
It was well, exciting. That whole game. <coughs> I give the kings to S SS. Good job. But good job to EOD as well. I got a heart. <laughs> oh, what were your favorites? There. there there was so many fights that game that I was just like my eyes were diverting everywhere. It was like they were equaling out for sure. In, in a lot of fights. What what were your mm. fights? Now that you've had a little bit to breathe, you've had some water, collected your no. thoughts. What do, what do you think, Hyper? What do you think, DBZ? I I have some notes. If you if you are a little sop, so um, I can I can say one of the notes if you want. Free, so why, what do go we for it, go for it? Free, go for, you. I gotta breathe, bro. So you go first. You get, definitely, I get it. Um. Let's go. How about this? How about you and I breathe? How about you and I breathe? Yeah, go and ahead. You, go you're, in my, you're in my you're in my head. You're in my head. You go oh, call so it out. Sorry. <laughs> so you know what? While both of you breathe, we can go straight into the interview. How about Works that? For me, bring bring, bring, bring them on me. in. Who did oh, we whatever. grab to interview today? We the support. Or we're gonna grab the support today for. Yes! All right, dude. I am literally. We're grabbing the support I'm... for SS today. We're oh, interviewing. Yes. Are you guys excited? Yes. Okay. Uh, before oh, before man. we bring in literally sad, um, you and your team or, and EOD, uh, you guys owe me a cup of tea with honey in it because I can't feel my vocal cords. What a nuts game! Dude, what a nuts series! Aww. Oh my god. Uh, he is in here, so I am being told by a by a little bird. Literally sad does not need to be literally shy. You can go ahead. Yeah, you can say anything you want. You can be like, hey. Hey, are you? Aren't you so supposed to here, ask I'll, questions? I'll, I'll ask two questions. So first go of ahead. all, um, being being just like in the game, that was like a crazy like last game and a second game too. How how are you specifically doing? How are you feeling? What did you like that entire entire time? What was your favorite highlight? Could be for yourself. Could be for the team. Yeah, I mean that whole Blitzcrank game. I kind of broke their ankles, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Blitzcrank. Game one. Yeah, that was pretty much. Yeah. So. I, I do I do have actually a question. So with that win, you guys are now six and zero, top of the division. We were low key kind of hoping they uh, EOD would upset you for a four way tiebreaker, but you are first in the division, undefeated. Like what 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 is the like what is like the regimen that you guys go through to be able to meld like this as a team? Yeah, I mean honestly, so when that first power ranking came out, right? This is gonna be a little a little bit of a story. That's fine. So when that first power ranking came out. Well, let me quote it here for you. We got uh, EOD, CKS, PTS feel like the teams that have the highest chance to make the playoffs out of this division, with SS, Ding, and others barking at the door for that fourth place spot, right? We're undefeated at this point, and they're telling us we're a fourth place team, barely. So, I mean, we just started tryharding to prove them wrong. That's honestly it. Wow. Love it. Good. I I totally support that. I love that story. That's amazing. And you know what? I'm giving you the king, like King Poro, like since you're interviewing. Can you, can you see in the camera? Like, please accept this King Poro. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was pretty chat. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I like that. I like that answer. I do got a question for you. Um, so game three comes around. Uh, you guys are stomping pretty hard. That insane. Top fight breaks out where oh Bane God. gets ulted by the Mordekaiser, ends up coming out and killing him. Fight progresses. Kogma shows up and he manages to carry the fight. What is your guys's like? What happened in your guys's like call? Like what happened with the comms going on after that fight broke out? What was the communication after after it was all said and done? Yeah, so it's that fight was a lack of comms actually. Oh. So, Ooh. me and the ADC wanted to pick off Yorick, but they wanted to fight. We just weren't talking. After the after the fact, we, we were like, yeah, we just gotta, we just gotta talk. I mean, it was just lack of comms. They wanted to fight top, we wanted to pick Yorick. 
Yeah, okay. I don't. I, when, if you watch this game back, you'll honestly hear me kind of flame you specifically a little bit because you kind of walked forward into the cog mother, and I was like, "What are you doing, lad?" But I'll tell you, my well, play. It was actually a, a mechanical misplay. I had uh, I had up um my uh stopwatch still. I just I just didn't click it. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, so delaying uh, the stopwatch. Gotcha. Uh, actually, okay, so yeah, that 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 little it's those little things definitely. But I mean, it didn't really matter. You guys had scaled so far into the game at that point. And it did look like for a hot second that after you guys lost that base fight that EOD like absolutely could have come back into the game. But at that last fight at the at the last dragon, um I imagine the comms were pretty chaotic cuz on our end it looked it was like I'm sorry for the language, Matt. It was a clusterfuck on our screen. That it was like all of you were like all compacted together, and it's just like what, what what was like the thought process going on? Like just like 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, get the cog, get the cog. Like what what were you he like talking like during that part of the game? Yeah, I mean the only words going on there was just kill the cogma, kill the vein. That's it. Okay, just you guys, over and over. <laughs> you guys did absolutely that. Cogma and vein. Yeah went down i actually had to watch that replay in slow motion just to see exactly what happened your adc full health that entire fight right click into end it trundle hits the cogma skarner hits the vein mm -hmm. and you guys take the victory um thank you thank you literally sad all um, right everybody so before we move on to tyrell who's going to be explaining the tiebreaker and the process in both divisions um what what do you both have to say do you have a little do you have a one breath to say say something <laughs> are we gonna do that tonight and do we get to cast it please <laughs> That is all I have to say. Have to do say we get to do that now. tonight, and can we cast it? <laughs> all right. If you can even talk. Anyways, thank you so much for everybody tuning in. And oops, sorry, I'm so excited after watching all those three like mind blowing games. Have a good night, everybody. And we're not out. quite. We have oh, one more oh, thing yet. to do. One more thing. Then. One more thing. All right, DBZ yeah. has one thing. Take, I don't. Take it away, DBZ. The director of ops is oh, here. Stop. Tyrell, you're the glue to our projections. What is up, Chiefs? Hi. I'm dying. Yes. Hello. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, the this season of Draft League, uh, due to the scheduling, uh, we have opted to use a tiebreaker week, just because not every team will have played each other. Okay. So... Uh, now that we have all the results in, there is going to be a somewhat complicated scenario going on in Group A and a pretty simple scenario going on in Group B right now. So I'll start with the Group A scenario. So what's happened there? Uh, we have uh, three teams where their record is settled. Uh, there is no need for tie-breaking where the first three seeds are all predetermined. So what's going to be happening is a four-way or not a four-way, a three-way tie for fourth place, this final seat. Ooh. And that is between uh, Team 5, who we, we saw on Risen 2 earlier, uh, LSTRP, and SHDC. Those three teams are going to be facing off for the final seat. So what's going to be happening for them? Uh, we have pre-drawn an order of which game, which teams will play first. So LSTRP will first play Team 5. Stephen Hawking Dance Club will then come in and play LSTRP. And then Team 5 will play Stephen Hawking's Dance Club. And they're going to play these games consecutively, uh, just because it's three teams. What will then happen at that point is we will check the game record of this round robin. So if one of these teams just two O's the other two teams, they just get the slot. Period. Over. Uh, where it gets complicated is if one of these teams does not do that. So if they all go one-to-one -one versus each other, that's when it's going to get hairy. What we have decided is that the first resort tiebreaker in that scenario is that we will evaluate the strength of schedule of the three involved teams. We're probably just going to do this in advance. And what we will then do is we will break off the weakest team the team with the worst strength of schedule 
and we will just eliminate them from contention. And then the other two teams remaining will just uh, BO, BO one each other one last time for that slot. Um, if for some reason strength of schedule should fail, uh, we will look at H2H if possible. And if not, then we will look at overall uh, game win record. Uh, so that's just basically like which who who went uh, to one or like who went to all in their games. Like basically who had the neatest wins and the and the and the uh, who gave their opponents the biggest run for their money. So those will be our tiebreakers of last resort. But we expect hopefully that like someone will go two zero, and if not, then we can use strength of schedule. That's what we're hoping. So that's the situation in Group A. Uh, that's all written down. You can see that in the schedule. Uh, group B will be pretty simple. Uh, group B, since we just saw um, Staff Sucks versus EOD, so if EOD had won, this that would have gotten Harry. Uh, but since EOD yeah. lost and Staff Sucks won, uh, that will be a very simple situation. And it's especially so because all these teams are playing for seeding. Uh, the playoff picture was already determined like before this just because of records so we already knew who was going to playoffs we just didn't know um in what order so it's been determined now that uh staff sucks will take the first seed eod will take the final four seed so we're just gonna have uh coach cup sucks and uh team dinglebert uh just do a simple bo3 since they haven't played each other um they're just gonna bo3 for that two seed and then the loser just gets the three seed easy okay Easy peasy. Wait, wait, is it Dinkleberry or Dinklebert? Did it's they change their name? Bert. It, it's always <laughs> been Dinklebert. <laughs> it's just we've been saying it last time. I, yeah, we, we've been saying it wrong on, in, as a meme. Well, oh. it also. They <sighs> kind of found out that like it's kind of a uh, no no word on Twitch, so uh, they changed it as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I won't say it anymore. I didn't know that, but that's good. I, I also like Dinglebert because you know our joke with fairly odd parents. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> um, is Tyrell still here? Before you leave, Tyrell, yes. I made you a little Thank sign you. that says "Love you, Tyrell." Thank you. Thank you so much for putting in so much work into like organizing all this. It's Oh my God. Nightmare sometimes. God. So love you, love, love you, Tyrell. I don't know if it's backwards, but love you. Thank you. I I love Valentine's. <laughs> Aww. Well, I hope you have a good weekend. And so, I mean, you can stay in the call. That you can stay in the call. So uh, on a high unified uh, people. So we're about to do something. I don't know what we're doing yet. I'm assuming we're, we're gonna yeah, raid as we raid out. All right. So, hello. We're going to raid out Unified. I don't know where we're going, though. Where are we going, Prod? Where are we going? We going to SDC League. SDC what? League BB! That's where we're going. Right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night and stay tuned. Lost